order. Uh, first item is consider additions or adjustments to the agenda. Are there any additions from the board? One that's kind of more in the form of a question, maybe, but it's related to road post. Okay. You want to go ahead? Is that an issue and concern? Uh, it could be. It could. We could do it as an issue of concern. Uh, Let's do it under there. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Is that all you have? I think, uh, I think it's two more than you. Any other select board members? Take your sweater. If everyone has one for a while underneath. Uh, everybody's ignoring me. I'm all set. Uh, I have a proclamation to present to the board. Uh, for Alice Whiting, <clears throat> and we can do that under issues and concerns. We're just going to put a comma there, reasons for celebration. Good with that? Can I add another addition? No. Okay. Um, so the Jenna Thomas uh, came back and do some mistakes and what is not. Um, the hearing was not posted in time. I don't remember there was quite a crunch to get the 15 day notice in. And although we noticed it on time, the news and citizen did not get it in the newspaper within that 15 day limit. And so we have to re notice that hearing mm -hmm. for participation. We can we notice that so we may get that 6 15 p.m. before the spike burn hearing? I'm fine with that. Other board members? Okay, 6.15 on May 6th, that is. I put that in my calendar right now. There'll be an uh, agenda to go out for the public hearing either way, but yeah. Did you say May 15th or May 6th? May 6th. May 6th, oh. that 6.15. Maybe I got that mixed up. <laughs> I thought it was 6 p.m. on May 6th. Okay. Uh, Additions or adjustments. Next item is review invoices and orders. We're doing that throughout the meeting. If there's questions, all are. Uh, next item, I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from March 18th. So moved. And I'll second that. Motion a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Now we get to the item that we moved all the items from number one under, which would be select board issues and concerns. Let's deal with issues and concerns first, and I'll deal with the reason for celebration second. Okay, so um, Jason probably has the best idea about this of anybody. Tom has recently been appointed road commissioner, so I'm wondering if between the two of them, we could delegate the responsibility or the authority to remove the spring time posting limits. I've been out on the roads a couple of times. Things are drying out fast, but I don't know what's going to happen Thursday. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the, the edges are still soft, uh, you know, in the shoulders for heavy, heavy vehicles. It would be good to at least go a couple of weeks, have a day. But I think I think what Duncan's proposing is um, that we would potentially leave it in your hands to lift it, not oh. having to lift it. But right now, the select board has posted them for all of March, which is gone in April, correct? Yeah. But if you and Tom believe by April 18th or whatever, 15th, 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 16th, yeah. whatever, if, if the board so chooses, you guys could decide when the end date. Yeah, so my, can I make a formal motion to delegate the authority to... You certainly can. ...let the uh, special posting delegate that to Jason and Tom? I have a second there. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. The other item is a potential proclamation. Um, Alice Whiting's 90th birthday celebration is on April 20th. Um, and I'm proposing a proclamation for Alice Whiting. I'll just read it aloud. I can send it to you if you need a dollar. Uh, it says, in recognition of Alice Whiting's 90th birthday, 
whereas Alice served 50 years in early childhood and higher education in the community, whereas Alice served on the Johnson OREA Club, whereas Alice served as an acting member and membership secretary in the Johnson Historic Society. Therefore, we select board of the town of Johnson by virtue of the authority vested in us by the laws of Vermont to hereby proclaim Saturday, April 20th, 2024 as Alice Whiting Day. And I guess I'm making that motion as second. Is that okay if I make that motion? Uh, Absolutely proclaiming uh, uh, April 20th Alice Wedding Day. Yes. My motion is to proclaim April 20th Alice Wedding Day. Second. Mike has seconded further discussion. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 Well, let's have a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's terrific. But uh, the Barbell Historical Society, I thought you said is acting, and she's a, she's a trustee. Active. Active. Oh, active. 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 Okay. Is that okay? You're right. Yeah, the, the official term is trustee. The board prefer that be changed and printed. I, I think it's a recognition. Yeah. Okay. He's an active member. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and membership secretary. So that kind of connotates yeah. an official position, trustee position. It's wonderful. Hopefully, we can get it on better paper than this. Uh, I believe, like one of the I believe Rosemary Crane is or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so oddly enough, so I call the motion when I need it. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All right, aye. All those opposed, I do agree with you, Mark. It should be like a part and the ayes have it. One quick item with this, uh, there's been a request to have a select board member present this to Alice on the 20th, and I am not available. Uh, I did ask Duncan if he's available in place chair. It makes sense, but uh, is anybody opposed to Duncan representing the board? Certainly not. Okay. okay. Sign away. My understanding is that the actual party is going to be at, at her house. No, no. It's the United Church. Oh, the United Church. Yeah. Okay. Has she okay. Been, she been in town her whole life. Longer than I've been around. I would say so. Yeah. Rosemary, who taught you? Alice Whiting did it in kindergarten. Got a new phone bill. Uh, uh, you won't say how many years ago that was now. Isn't it like, was there a Whiting in the cemetery? Yeah. I think it's named after her. Oh, it's no. named after her. That's family. Yeah. Okay. It's not her. No, parents yeah. weren't yeah. intended to her. Yeah. That's a little in your house. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you want the black band to do all the black? He's got a black band. All right, our next item on the agenda is planned purchases. Tom, would you like to explain that one? Well, there's actually um, maybe could have been an addition. Um, we have two two contracts in the packet um, for day land surveying. We did um, surveying for the village already for a certificate of elevation. And so the first and most important is we have to define what the elevation is for the 500 year floodplain at the municipal building. And that's for FEMA to sign off on our mitigation efforts. Um, the, our, um, our efforts with flood proofing the building have to raise the level above the 500 year mark. So we don't know where that is. And FEMA wants us to prove that with a certificate elevation. It, it is reimbursable at 75% and 12.5% to the state. Um, and it may be even part of the 100% reimbursement um, that was just declared by Governor Smith. I'm not sure if it takes it on the line, but um, we'll see. But at least 7.5% will be covered. And that costs $1,500. So I'd like. Um, your permission to move forward with that certificate of elevation um, so that we can move the mitigation efforts along here. Um, this building, um, the downstairs work is almost done. They're going to be done 
on by Wednesday, and we're going to have new, up next week. And we're going to have new furniture ordered um, soon, and that's about four to six weeks out from moving downstairs um, after that furniture gets ordered. Oh, um, for the furniture, that's probably four to six weeks four, so they to get the furniture, and then a few weeks after that, you move. Maybe. Why wasn't that furniture ordered for me? Uh, we were waiting on the, we have still putting together the, the losses from the contents. Those contents weren't determined until about, was it three weeks ago we did cleaned out? Um, I think it was three weeks ago, we cleaned out the, that first floor. And so we had no idea what the total loss was for the contents until we cleaned it out. And so now I'm working with VLCP to first get the insurance payment. We have $160,000 worth of coverage, um, $60,000 from the village, $100,000 from the town. And so we're now itemized, we have to itemize everything that was lost and then put a replacement value with a proof of replacement value. So I'm using staples as a base and printing out a sheet for every item. Um, pretty extensive process, but for 160000 it's worth every penny. Um, so that we're hoping to have that done with an April 12th check uh, to be delivered by ELCP. And I just, I spoke with them ELCP this morning and I'm going to get that done. I understand that the way, but it's just too bad that couldn't have been done a little quicker. So it would be in the office. But. Absolutely. You know, I think 2020 hindsight, what we probably should have done is cleaned out the first floor um, much sooner after the flood. And I think we were in such disarray coming up here, going downstairs was kind of daunting. And so it literally came to the last day that we had to do it, that we did it. And um, it was it, it was two very long days that were quite disgusting actually but um everybody's been upstairs too long that's absolutely i mean it's like a dystopian movie up here the crisis you know it's like like a war there but um anyways the next step to move phase two of that project phase one is almost done phase two is scheduled to begin in about three weeks but they can't begin without fema sign off and the first, next thing fema is asking for is a certification of elevation so if we could have a motion to Approve that fifteen hundred dollar purchase, and the surveyor can move forward. So I'll move, Mr. Chairman. In there, second. There's a motion and a second. Further discussion. I have a question. Before I come. Um. So you did I understand you correctly to say that they're looking for a five hundred year? Yeah. So you say you elevate, say you rebuild or you elevate the building. I think you have your first habitable floor has to be at the 500 year mark at the beach. And so, and I think they're mitigating. So the flood proof this building, I believe, 500. We have to put the mitigation efforts to the 500 year mark. So that way, it's the assumption of FEMA they'll never. They're going to give us that extra money. They never want to come back here. Does anybody know what that 500 year? We do. Yeah, the picture of it's, so the generator right between the fire station and the municipal building that that was that that's elevated to the 500 year mark. So I thought that was 100. It's 500 year. That's what I was told. Um, and I I will revisit with with Ron and make sure you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they better revise that. Yeah, the new maps are coming, but we'll see. I'm pretty sure that when the fire station, the Rosemary building, and this building was built, this was the pad was elevated to the base flood elevation. Plus one foot. So we were one foot over the 100 year flood. One foot above. And that was the 100 year. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. So the 500 year. <clears throat> well, I, th I think really close. We have we have three feet above grade at a, to the bottom of the windows. Because they've got to just mitigate. It's got to flood again. Short two. And so and so they're willing to pay to flood proof the building. And so we're gonna have flood gates and then excuse me and a 60 mil membrane, um, so that. We won't have any. If it does flood, it doesn't matter. Let it flood, and we'll dry out. You say 16 at that? No, 16. 60. 60. Yeah. How much is 60? If cigarettes are 100 It's your age minus 20. If it's a cigarettes are 100 million, you're 60. 
That's this year, this was all discussed a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 plastic. That's what I'm trying to say. Point four million. I have to look it up. But uh, we have to have this certificate of elevation, even if I'm wrong and it is a hundred year and I misspoke. You still need the. It's probably you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. My, my my only you know the disconnect in my mind was I thought our other information was based on a hundred year. Yeah, you know which we assumed was. Okay. The standard at the time. And you are allowed to build within the 500 year flood plan. It, it's, uh, you have to be above the 100 year. But for them to do mitigation efforts, I believe you have to mitigate through the 500 year or above the first half of the floor. So, my question is are you seeking approval for both of these? Or no, that's a single. Thing? I think they're going to be separate. I think uh, Duncan's going to weigh in on the second part with some exciting news. I don't think okay. he doesn't really know this room. Motion on the floor to approve a $1,500 expense uh, that was quoted on March 27th. That's a second. Any further discussion? But none all those signified by saying aye. All right. All those opposed? The ayes have it. 60 millimeters is 2.3 inches. Can you? Yeah, but 60 mil plastic is 60 millimeters. Uh, can you delegate? Can you either sign that or delegate to keep your authority to that? Would the board like to delegate the signature of this contract to Tom? Yes. Okay, is that a formal motion? Yes. All right, set the motion a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. There you go, Tom. Thanks. So the second part of this is the certificate of elevation to draw a line in the sand at Legion Field, you know where the 500 year mark, or if if the library grant is awarded and the building is to be moved to that area, we need then to cite that building, we need to know where the 500 year mark is. There is no reimbursement for this $2,500. Um, I believe Duncan and Gene spoke about a temp, an alternative option from Gene's son. Do you know more about that? Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that would be. Ex I don't. So Gene Engel's son, Taylor, is an engineer. Um, Taylor has agreed to do some pro bono work for. Establishing the limits of the flood zone based on, I understand, the new maps, yeah, the new data um, on, you know, on our parcel GIS base. Um, I don't know if that's going to be well, adequate or satisfactory for. When we put the grant in, we labeled six potential options. We did that intentionally, knowing that the idea was to move it too closer to the center of town and off of school street and all six options are right there yeah so i think if we could get a preliminary 600 feet or sorry it's a preliminary 500 foot line then at least then okay let's we know that one's out of the question because the drone said it and then that's when when we that'll help us pick the site to then pay for a single elevation instead of paying in two sides of the field. yes like so a, so taylor taylor angle is willing to do that basic work on GIS and there's LIDAR, which is the aerial, and there's there's also the ability to do actual elevation for drones very LIDAR. But basically he's agreed to do that if he can access the information from Omaha County Planning Commission. I spoke with Evan. Um, I've been asked the Omaha County Planning Commission to provide the data to Taylor. So they can do that work as a heads up. Um, so if he does, if, if he gets the information and he does it, it will certainly, we may still have to do it if yeah. we get the grant, but it will certainly give us a much better idea of where that funder here at Elevation is. Time is of the essence of this. Yeah. And, well, I think Jean has a little sway with Taylor's. She might be able to push it a little higher. Yeah, because this has to be done quick. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's probably more important once we know we get the grant. Yeah, which is if we don't get the grant, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know? that then we're flood proof in the building where it is, and it's just gonna kind of lose in the community. Yeah. I mean, but right now, I mean once we get that 
once we get worse, uh, I believe Messier said they're, they're four, four weeks out, and they said two to three weeks out from like mobilizing to move that building. And then the only holdup would be um, the contract for the, and I believe we're still kind of tied in with Tetro. It's just be a modification of the contract because we put the bid in for the first year. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but I believe it might be. Um, for that, I think they move the building in and they pour the foundation underneath it in place, and then they slide out the beams. So mm -hmm. once we get the grant, I think we're a month away from starting the project. We're going to be planning a parade. Is it your Believe for understanding that we would need that a surveyor's certificate of elevation if we do get the grant and propose a particular spot. Only under one set. I have a phone uh, email out to Vermont Emergency Management. If they are willing to give us, they have three hundred thousand dollars for these buyouts and for relocating building. If they're willing to use that funding in, in combination with the library funding, we don't need a grant. We don't need a survey. So, but there's another option where we can use FEMA has a, some funding available. I think it's called brick funding that has money available to relocate buildings. If we use FEMA's funding, then we need a certificate of elevation. But if we don't, if we use the Department of Libraries, which is ARPA funding, it's a lot looser, and Vermont Emergency Management funding is a lot looser, probably don't need it at all, and therefore why aren't we not? If we move forward with the FEMA side, we're definitely going to I guess my purpose of asking the question is well, we should not be asked. Tom, to secure that certificate of elevation with Mark Day Associates if it is needed and we don't have a meeting. You know, if it's time sensitive, we don't have a meeting. Oh, to spend up to well, it's $1,500 per site. It's, and that's the same that they charge the village consistent, or it's $2,500 to be the two. If the LIDAR could narrow in our search to a site, then we don't need, you could approve up to $1,500 for that. What are the board's wishes? I mean, we could give Tom authorization if need be. That's the cleanest way to do it. If it's $1,500, that's 25. Yeah, well, it's 25 for two sites. We, we just approved one site. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm confused about because we approved one that says field measurements to determine elevation data at the existing library site. It's going on as proposed library relocation site. Could I suggest a uh, um, motion? Make a sure. I think the motion should be to authorize Tom to spend up to $1,500 for a single site of the future library to be determined. Based on the IR operation. And oh, if needed. If needed. Yeah, if needed. Support member to make that motion. I don't need to be a hall on that with somebody else. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. I have, do you have that motion, Donna? I think I've got it, Donna. Yeah. Second. All right, right. motion and second. Further discussion. All those in favor, paper signify by saying aye. Uh, all those opposed, you guys are beating down my door with the eyes here. All right. Any other plan purchases? I don't see any in the agenda packet. Yeah, I uh, have two that I didn't get uh, numbers back. Uh, Norwegian trucks. We send our trucks down every spring for state inspection at uh, spring cam. Carpenter's ready to start taking the trucks in and get inspected for service. Two of the four trucks is not under warranty. So if they need something, I can bring that back to the board, I guess. I guess they don't have a dollar amount to be comfortable with. It's less than a thousand you don't need us anyways. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's two lug nuts, forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, but it's gonna be at just under a thousand per truck. Because of the state inspection with the spring paint or the PM that we have put here. Right. When they do all the oil paint and they go through the trucks, look at all of them. That's how that's been consistent the last couple of years. But I was just curious because they need something like for inspection. 
Well, we're going to we're going to approve it. We can approve it right now, or you can come back to us. But we're not going to say, "Oh, that truck doesn't pass inspection. Don't spend your money." It is, yes. Yeah, it's, it's just touchy when it's a thousand dollar limit because. <clears throat> I, I think that's way too low. Well. But that's not my right. We can we can have that discussion so we have that as in the in the packet. Yeah. So are you proposing something or you could authorize Jason to you know spend not in excess of five thousand dollars per truck as long as it's required for state inspection, or we could just pass it over and come back to us or I just don't want the truck down there. And they come back. And, and they come back, back. And then back and forth. If they call you up and say it needs this. The last couple of years, that wasn't a big deal because they were still under the warranty. So they yeah. have to have this. Now it's tough. Right. Less windshield time, the better, I would say. Yeah. If it's there and they call you up and say, sorry, we're, we're at 2000 bucks." The other way, the other way we could handle it is by asking Jason to do whatever is needed to uh, get the trucks to pass inspection. We provide retroactively a COVID nice meeting. Um, as long as the public knows about the battle. I was buying the last one. I, I had a strong suspicion that Jason was not going to authorize the spending no, on sorry. something that isn't needed. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy authorizing Jason to do what needs to be done to get the trucks in place. Is that a motion? It is. All right, there's a motion on the floor. I got it. Motion a second for the discussion. I just do what needs to be done to get the trucks inspected. There's part of the Donna, you have that. That's I think that's important here. Yeah. yeah. You're clear on that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just yeah, whatever it needs to have the safe inspection done. Okay. Yeah. Are you good on that, Donna? Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. All right. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? You guys have it? You said there was two. Yep. Well, the second two trucks? Nope. <laughs> the second one is they've got the greater bits. Last year we bought them in bulk. They're the same thing again this year before they go up in price. They're 18. But we already talked about this. Hey, you're going to go bed yeah. change. Come on. Bed change. Bed change. Okay. So they're still eighteen dollars a bit. It takes ninety-eight bits per change. I know. That's heart condition. The last time you guys authorized me to spend no more than thirty-six hundred, I believe, for the bits that I get usually fifty extra. Then we, when we change the amount, that's what great. They wear it every week, so the marks constantly moving around, and we save. Them from the this one that we just changed, so we got 45 or so that are uh, half three quarter floor. We mix them into that batch, so we end up getting almost two changes. It'll take us until next year. Thank you. I like 15 minutes. Good. So they're 18 of these. Yeah. And they need how many? 98. It's how many it takes to fill them all at once. Yeah. Can okay. I get 150 of them? They come 50 in a row. Yeah, that's 2700 even. One of the board's wishes. If you could offer it up, up to $3,000, we could really go off. I would move, move to offer it, Jason, to purchase three boxes of greater bits, just so we're clear. Yeah. If you do that, can we bold greater bits and underline it and italicize it? Because it's really exciting stuff. Why I come to you. All right. Three boxes <laughs> clear enough. Like, did they come? Three boxes of boxes, three boxes of fifty. Right, you said they're fifty. That's how they've been shipped. Yeah. I'll make sure. Are you are forty-eight. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> okay, so Duncan's motion is to thank Don is clear on purchase three boxes of fifty. Right. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Motion a second. Further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, all those opposed. Go get those awesome bits. So you're saying you're eighteen dollars a piece. Any further? On once going twice. Say for fool's day is the time to put it in. Okay. Rosemary, you have the floor. Okay, we'll see you for bill today. 
So competitive energy services for the fuel bidding contract. And it is in the amount of $1,545.75. And you guys want to sign up on it? Yes. We'd all have to sign it. Okay. It's fulfilling a contract mm -hmm. of three to four well, You basically are looking for a free or pay anyway. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. after your Can we just say lesson one? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 it, it, it might. I have a murmur. <laughs> I mean, we just got done with with money things, and those may just bring us a bill. I would move to authorize payment of competitor competitive energy services LLC invoice in the amount of one thousand five hundred forty five dollars and seventy five cents. Sounds like a very specific <laughs> motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yes, you got it. Anything else? I see a cannabis. Cannabis. Full board application. Yeah. People in the top of the answer. This is a renewal. For New England Cannabis Partners, LLC. For an outdoor cultivator tier three. What are the board's wishes? We don't have any say, really. Yeah, we do nothing, they get it automatically in 45 days. Do nothing. <laughs> I know we approve it. Can you be specific for the money? Um, yeah. We approve Norplay. Is that who it is? Salesforce.com? No. It's no, it's New England Cannabis Partners LLC doing doing business as Mother Plant. Mother Plant. <laughs> it's not Mother. It's Mother. Oh, wow. Mother Plant. Okay. Well, we approve the program. Mark's really not good with this stuff. <laughs> no, I'm not. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Mm -hmm. All those opposed? Nay. We'll do a roll call. Mark, how do you vote? Yes. Duncan, how do you vote? Nay. Mark, that's Mike. Nay. Should I vote with your partner? Nay. Shane. Anything further, Rolls? You mean that? Sorry, Hat. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see you can have some of these outdoor grow operations in the world. Okay. Perfect. 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 So we are moving on we're, we're to Jason's here. report, which the board all received last week. I can't tell you that. Any highlights you would like to go over, Jason? Or? Uh, truck 21 had a timing cover gasket failure. It wasn't under warranty. It was one of the newest ones. They called it aware. I, so, there's an invoice coming for that, and it might be in this packet. I'm not sure that if it was or not. That was one thing. Uh, Are you coming on fixing the sides? It's it's one of those wonderful um, spell check things. Uh, signs in the size. Oh. <laughs> so and then uh, we're doing mirror road maintenance and spring road maintenance still. So good. Get used to it. Yeah. Multi season maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Could have one season. Mother. And uh, I talked to Chip Percy about the gravel pit. He wants to move the excavator over to the pit to start staging the material so we can get it hauled up to spring. Late spring, I guess we'll say. We're trucking it, but he's loading it. He's Taking it out the set, he calls themselves, everybody does, but so we're cleaning the pit up in sections. So he's going to dig down here and he can. And except that the lower is such a tight space that it's going to go down there. So he's going to reach down with the big excavator, clean it out, and put it up on the 
in the mice tag for us, and then we're going to load it and truck it up. And on our return trip, which so for every two loads we bring, we get a load back. So on one of the trips, they're going to be coming back loaded. So they're you know, like, you know, filling the sand pile at the same time as they're doing all this. If we get all 12,000 yards left out, that's our goal. Nice. Depending on if we're still following snow, maybe we can. There's a why not? There's been some uptick in sign vandalization again. They're tagging stop sign. Any other signs they can tag? I got a couple on tour that we didn't have at the star and horse crossing signs, but uh, I uh, I've reached out to a couple of vendors about making where all the signs are in real good shape the steel bar or the aluminum bar. So there's a, a vendor that's making uh, retro reflective sign. You know, the sticking that we can stick on the, right over the old sign. So it, was, it should save a little bit more than half of what the cost of a new stop sign, for example. So, yeah. it how, is. how long is that sticky going to stick for? Well, they, it's how they, they, they come from the factory and they have this, they cut them out and they stick them on it. So it's just that we're going to do it in house so we don't have to keep buying it. I just mm -hmm. envision stop signs with half the stop feeling off. You only have to stop. Yeah. So I tap on pedal. The sign. You, you drive the around the village lately, most people don't even stop at all. Okay. And the next month meeting, I probably won't have a report till the Monday of the having to back at the end of the Cool. How's the uh, damage solved? That's pretty good. Yeah, it hasn't been a Super Bowl winner, and we're using it up. It's used not quite half of the pile, so we're going to take the, as soon as the road dry out, they're getting there, so they'll start home. We'll have to help us bring in the, they ain't going to be able to fill the contract because we don't, we don't need that much salt, but we'll have them start bringing it in probably after the next meeting. If they're we gotta take that salt out, try to plant it on a dry day so they can bring it. There's you want to put the new salt in the bag and put that in the front, but it's it's working but that has to your question. It hasn't been super cold, so it's not getting super chunky. Uh, it's good. Any further questions from the board on Jason's report? So Jason, on your uh coal patch, you eat the holes up first. We do, we all, um, we do in, uh, and when it's not so time sensitive, like in the, when the, in May, June, when we're putting it in, we usually heat them up, we, and it, it'll last all summer. And then some of the holes that are deeper this time of year, it's kind of hard to get them heated up to a temperature that they're going to even do anything for because the water is still going to get down in there. And then the rain's going to get out there. Take it away. Well, we used to have one of those big torches and we'd uh, heat that up in a little bit shape so it was smoldering. Then we'd throw the batch in. Then we had those big, that big tamper and we'd smash it in. But you see the state, they just come to these big holes full of water and just shovel it in and drive away. I mean, what good does that do? It doesn't do any good when the water's still in it. We take the leaf blower and blow it all out and yeah. put it in. It's hard in the wintertime for us to stand there and heat it up when they're in the center. You know, yeah, yeah, I know. Flames. Just check and see the difference. Any further questions on Jason's yep. report? Thank you for your report. Uh, another item underneath your report is the tree grade, uh, the arboretum grant from the state highway right away. So, who would you like to? Give a synopsis of that work in the board. You give a, an overview, like a 30,000 foot overview of that project? Sure. We have uh, 13 kits, but we're only going to do 12 because one of them uh, would not allow Nate to get the six year by when he plows. We did a lot of talking about this with Nate and Eric Bailey and Jason 
uh, people who came out of coffee shop and had an opinion. And we all decided. So can you speak up a little bit? About this? Having a senior moment. Uh, in the end, uh, we looked into a lot of different options, and Jason had the idea of putting bottle arts in each corner of those pits. Uh, we need to remove the grates because it's impacting the tree roots, and uh, it's also way too labor intensive to take those things out every time you want to pull weeds, so the weeds don't get pulled. Uh, also, the uh, cages around the trees are too small. There's several of them that are broken. And trying to cut those things back, and it's just important. so the state gave us, or I guess it's the feds actually gave us enough money to build this new system that Jason came up with. The chains between the bollards will be three sided, not on the street side. They'll be about two feet tall, so people can't step into them, but um, they can get the balls around. And we have it fully funded. So I'm not quite sure what the connection is with the village that's the concern. They're the village trees. Yes. Yeah, the village grades, the village, I mean, it's part of, all of that is subject to a right of way permit issued to the village for the care and maintenance of those trees. So somebody needs to contact, and my my take on it is it that it's the village because the village is issued the right of way permit mm -hmm. in the in the state highway right away. Okay, I can ask Eric to do that. What's that? I can ask Eric Daly to do that. Yeah, and then I mean, I guess my question is why why would the town do that work? It's a village. The village owns it. It's a village sidewalk. It's village trees. Why shouldn't the village? Do the work instead of the town doing the work. Well, because it was the road from Foreman's idea, and he gave us a bid to do it in overtime, and we got full funding for it. So I could ask someone else to do it, but it was Jason's idea, and he had the best approach to it, and it all fit. Yeah, I mean, one of my concerns is. We we don't have any authority legally to be out there in the state's highway right away doing work. Except that we've been doing it every every day for the last year. Well, the highway crew has been over here. Well, no, but does it matter it's the highway crew? Because anybody who got paid for the job would be doing it. It matters in terms of whether or not there is insurance coverage. So if our guys are out, the, the way the way that, generally speaking, the way our insurance coverage works is the LCT passive relies pretty strongly on the principle of sovereign immunity for coverage. So in other words, sovereign immunity, if you go to court, basically means that the town can't be sued. And the courts have interpreted that to mean as long as they're doing what they're legally authorized and supposed to be doing. So one of my concerns is the, the village has the right of way permit. They would be covered under their insurance policy if something happened. Heaven forbid some pedestrian gets hurt during this process or they damage a village water line or they damage somebody's infrastructure. The village is covered, the town is not. Well, my take is that it should be the village that does it, not the town. Well, the village has no intention of doing it. They didn't want to do it. Um, did you, did you ask them? They didn't have time to do it, correct? Why you asked me to do it? Yeah, I don't want to throw it with Nate, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> you had a question, Kyle. Well, I was just going to make a comment sure. because um, with the Rail Trail Committee, we kind of have gone through the same 
process soon because we are gonna we went through the town to get a grant to replace the infrastructure um along Main Street at the benches with like rats and all that. But we had to go to the village to get their blessing and for them to do the in-kind labor because it's same thing because it's their it's actually their property in the in the village state right away. And then we had to go to Seth Jensen at OCPC and the state to tell them that we're gonna get their blessing because we're in there right away. Even though that infrastructure has already existed there, there's an MOU through the village saying that the village has to maintain that infrastructure, but we still have to get the blessing and the approval of the state. Yeah, it's actually right more than an MOU. It's an actual section 1111 right of way permit, which very specifically authorizes all of the improvements for the Main Street project to the village, right. including, in this case, including the trees and their ongoing maintenance responsibilities. Oh, no. Is there an agreement between the town and village for um, paying for labor? I mean, this, not that I know of, I think there's some force trading here and there. Um, I think the town crews probably got more than enough work to do for the town uh, without doing work to the village. I think this is overtime bid that we met that it was outside of normal work hours. Isn't that clear? It was a, I heard the project, today. the project was when it was brought forth, it was uh, something that we could fit in. You know, in our schedule, as far as they did not have to be completed in this week, but we could work on it as we had time available. And it was uh, put in for two two guys with the with a hundred. What's all on the back? With a hundred dollars an hour, as far as uh, cover their compensation for workers gone their insurance and everything. So it was so uh, it was for ninety ninety six hundred dollars, I believe. I can look in, I can yeah, and, 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 and fully covered by the grant. And it was fully covered, so it was no cost to the town because at the time when it soon myself and Nate were talking, I had the impression that the village didn't have time to for the resources to dedicate it to the project. And all the boards asked the public works permit for help. And like that, I guess. As far as I mean, we came up with an idea, there was a taxpayer that came out and suggested a certain chain look because it used to be in front of the building that was down there. That's how it all really started. And the money for the grant would come into the town, correct? Mm -hmm. Labor. How so, much? Just how are these going to be installed? You're going to get some sort of box steel, tube steel, whatever. Tube steel. Some pretty little thing on top, weld up. Piece of chain to it, another piece, and you're just going to help them to the sidewalk. Or they were going to be a hand up with a postal bigger, the hand postal bigger down. So, um, I kind of where this that uh, everybody's happy. Is it possible? To see if you guys could purchase the material, we can get it all. Uh, if the board wishes, I hope you make a decision for the board. You purchase the material, do the welding and stuff, and see if we could hire a contractor could be hired to do the work. So that way, we're not working in that town. Village. Village would have to hire the contractor. The village would have to hire the person. The village would have to hire the contractor. But if the money's all hired from the grant. Yeah. And I don't know how the board even feels about this, but if we could write a check to the village and pay the contractor. Everybody's copacetic. We're not working outside our right away, taking out potential liability. We don't have to worry about indemnification contracts for utilities and personal injury, all this other stuff that the project is for. I'm just spitballing. Sounds like a really good decision. That, that was a real fun fly that was today. In the uh, public works permit, we kind of with the contractor. We can just a great on what our Everything was bid in a, for a certain direction, so we'd have to go in that direction to make it so it all works for for her grant. I think the first thing that needs to happen is 
VTRANS need to be needs to be contacted. They're going to want to see some sort of a sketch or plan or whatever of what's being proposed to be done. And they'll have to authorize that in lieu of the grades. Under, understand that the Main Street project was based on a set of approved plans. There was a very specific detail related to the tree planting, which, which involved the grades and the protective whatever, yes. cages around it. And I understand trees grow when things change, but the village needs to do that. The town should not do that. Villages, do it. it's the village product. It's the village that has the right of way permit. So the village needs to get an approved something from VTRAN saying your idea is good and can be done. And the second but, thing before we do anything, yeah, the village has to authorize the work entirely before. So they, they need like what, a permit 1111 11 amendment? They either need an amendment to the 1111 permit or they need written permission from VTRAN saying that this work can be done and approved. Probably something, some village motion saying that the highway crew can do the work and the village doesn't have the authority to do that. Well, just as, a, as an understanding that the highway crew will do the welding for this project or something. It has to be some collaboration that's acknowledged. If you guys are going to weld up these bollards and chains and have a subcontractor put them in, or is a subcontractor doing it all? I mean, you could pay $100 an hour and we make money. The more work you do, we make money. The more work the village does, they make money. The more work a subcontractor does, both of us lose. Well, so we're not making money. We're offsetting costs, labor. Yeah, but if you say you're doing else. something else. Yeah. Are you making money if it's $100 an hour? Yes, Mrs. Former Select Board Chair. The thing is that we shouldn't be hiring the contractor if the village has the right of way. Whoever is doing insulation needs to be through the village, whether it's a hired person or village doing the work. We shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be doing it. Anymore. We can't be doing it from like liability reasons. We don't have the authority. We have no authority to do anything. Well, no, no, no. Uh, my spitball idea was not us doing any work in the right way. It was just putting together the ball and some machines. Now, this is only on Route 15. This is from the state road. But I'm only asking because we do plenty of stuff on the, in the village and missing near the sidewalks on our roads. Yeah, it's 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 in Route 15. It's for anybody that doesn't know, it's a five rod route. It's 82 and a half feet. So all those trees are wholly within the mistakes right away. That's why they issued a section of permit permit for basically all of Main Street improvements. I mean, there's very little that took place as part of that Main Street project that's not within that 82 and a half feet right away. So I guess. How do I synopsize the board's wishes and hope that I don't get it completely wrong? Are we requesting Tom um, to inform Eric um, the holy village property? They have the permit. You don't need to write anything. Get a comment. And they may not um, work. And then. <laughs> And that they need to get permission from VTRANS in the form of 1111 permit amendment or some other form of authorization for this change. And let Eric deal with it for the village. And if they do all that, are we offering to just be a pass through for the grant money to the village? We get a check in for the grant money and where did where did the grant money come from? So I think it originated with uh, federal, but it came through the state through the uh, urban community forestry. Is this part of the large money in grants that you went for for the arboretum? 
Yes. The same grant that came through the water. Okay. Mm -hmm. The same grant that the same grant that's paying for the watering system. Yeah, I read them. It's like forty two thousand or something. You know, I work very hard to get that money, so I really hope that I'm not going to have a problem. Well, I don't ever remember any discussion about the Main Street trees, and I would certainly have said something if, had I known. I can't remember the beginning. You know, I, I, I also want to really strongly say that I appreciate everything that the tree board does. You guys do wonderful work. And the village is getting a great deal. You guys take care of those trees. That's a village responsibility that they are responsible for under that section 1111 permit. So you guys have done yeoman's work in taking care of those trees. And the village should be very thankful and grateful that you've done that work over the course of years. They probably are. I'm just care about the trees. <laughs> I know, and, 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 and I, I, I'm in the unfortunate position of having to care about the liability issues for the, you know, for the for the town. And it, it's not, it's nothing against the tree board or what the tree board's doing. Trust me, I think you guys are doing fantastic work. I appreciate that, mm -hmm. and I and I do understand. I guess I'm a little nervous because there's no way the town of the village or anybody could afford to pay thirteen thousand dollars for new grades and tree protection. We've got the money in our hand. We need to find a way to make this work. Would the board be okay being a pass through if Sue and I went to the village and helped articulate the, the concern? And if the village would agree to take on the work or in some fashion or agree to the work and agree to permitting, would the board be okay if the town was the pastor for that money to then pay the village for that work, for that process, you know, whether it's completed by the village or subcontractor, I don't think it matters, but the town would have to agree to accept the money and pass it off. That makes sense. I guess it's a question with the grantor. Yeah, why would we? Yeah, we don't lose the grant because of it. Um, yeah. Mike's fine with us as long as we don't lose the grant. No short, I doubt we did. Sometimes we'll see that. We want to uh, reconnect and then you know, it's it's trying to if I can find the grant for us. That would be a, if a lot of the grant. I'm trying to make the task right. Yeah, no, 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 no. No. All right. Are we? Are we? Go to their meeting tomorrow, or they reschedule next Monday to next Wednesday. Yeah. Whenever it works for you, it's fine. I'm gonna shoot an email right now to five again. Yeah, I think all you need to do is get a hold of Eric or them what they need to do to try to board us. Because right. like Florida said, we're okay with being passed. You understand? We're good. We're working in the bill trail. Okay. Any more on tree grades, or are we moving on to Randall's report? Hopefully, we're moving on. Okay. Hi, Randall. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. I can. All right. Great. I will spare you an extensive preamble. And I would just say that the this this part of the industrial park update is basically the process of uh, some ongoing conversations with LCPC. Uh, when they were before the board, along with me back in February, they had identified some concerns about additional costs that had not been accounted for. There were a series of ongoing conversations around that, trying to uh, they were doing work identifying what some of those may be, getting a full understanding based on existing contract that the town had with Mumley Engineering and the pending NEPA review that Mumley was doing. So we were waiting on a revised proposal for Mumley from Mumley Engineering about doing the environmental review for the site. Uh, you all have a copy of that. And in that process, uh, the conversation was such that there were a few um, costs that had been identified that had not been accounted for in the budgeting process and the grant application. And that's what uh, Pat is going to take the lead on and bringing to your attention for you to consider. 
Hey, everybody. Uh, Pat Ripley, Lamoille Economic Development Corporation. Um, just as a refresher of everyone's memory, or maybe if there's some new folks in the room on regarding our role in this project, um, we serve as the LDD, the local development district for the project. We essentially are responsible for overseeing reporting and um, keeping things on track, keeping things moving along. You'll see there is a cost line item in. Um, you all have the spreadsheet. Um, I've told Randall, gave you the spreadsheet I put together for costs with this. Johnson Industrial Park Project Budget Spreadsheet at the top, it says NEPA and Permit Consultants. Hopefully you all have that. Uh, yeah. I'm also, great. I'm also told you um, saw the latest NEPA estimate and have a copy of that. Randall provided that. You'll see there's a letter from Mumley Engineering, and then you're probably going to see some various uh, outlines of individual costs within there. Everybody got that? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. So um, generally speaking, this project goes back many years before my time. Um, the, but what is interesting and exciting about the moment we're at right now is that we have some money to do this with, potentially. Um, and there's a fair fair amount there to, to, to work through. However, we do have some details that we need to adhere to through this grant process, and there are some decisions the select board will have to make along the way. This decision we're hoping you can make tonight. We don't need to be in the presence while you make that decision, but we are hopeful you can make it tonight. Um, in terms of timeline, where we're at is we actually just got our notice today that we are six months in since we the project award was granted from the Northern Borders Regional Commission. Um, they're typically a three-year timeline. So we're six months into those three years and so far we haven't moved any funds and we haven't moved anything forward. So this is why we're really looking to the board to make some decisions on um, how they're going to proceed with this project. Now, there's a few things I would like to, if you have the spreadsheet in front of you, just kind of run through this quick, not quickly, but I'm, certainly stop me if you have any questions. Um, but I would like to run through this basic spreadsheet to give you an understanding of the scenario the town of Johnson is in with this um, grant award. <clears throat> so you're going to see at the top, we've broken it out to NEPA and permit consultants. That's your 290600 NEPA is environmental, for lack of a better description, it's an environmental review. Um, we're going to get some folks in there. They're going to be on the site and they're going to tell us what's going to need to be needed to be done to get the appropriate permits um, to get the project built. Um, so that number, 290,600, that's what that is. When you see your LDD, the 17-2 number, that's me. So through the life of the project, that's um, the most the LDD is going to cost the project. That number is not negotiable one way or the other. I don't make that number up. NBRC says that number is going to be 2% of the total project cost. So that's where that number comes from. Um, construction cost at the 1723, that's, again, an estimated number. Um, and that's your actual construction of the project. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the next number you're going to see is design permit filing. So this 46,500, this is the pre-existing contract with Mumley for design. And there is some permit um, filing included in that number. This is a pre-existing contract because it's it exists outside of NBRC. We've included it in there because it's part of the total project cost. It's my understanding the town's already paid a portion of this um, cost. I don't know how much, so I included the whole amount. So what you're going to see with the green, I don't know if you've got it in color or black and white, but when you see total project costs at the 2,078,229, that's all those numbers added up together. Now, I'll give you a little more detail around what those numbers mean and if there's potential for some of them to change because there is. There's no way in a project of this size for any of us to come to the board and give you an exact dollar amount about what it is going to cost you. That is not a possible scenario for us to do. What we can do is give you the, the best estimate that we can come up with. Now, you may say, well, why can't you tell me what it costs? Well, there's a lot of different factors that go into these sorts of things. Um, 
I just give you an example, you know, before think pre pandemic and that building as opposed to post pandemic building, we all know cost of goods went way, way up and they didn't come down. So some projects that we worked on prior to the pandemic that we got funding for all of a sudden construction costs ballooned. We had to adjust our plans. So those are, that's one example. Another example, and, and I think it applies to this project a lot, is we do a NEPA evaluation. The NEPA is essentially, if you haven't been through it before, if you have, I apologize for having to hear the same thing again because it's pretty boring stuff. But essentially, we're going to come in and figure out what the permit needs are. If there's a lot of wetlands, for example, your permit costs are going to go up. Your consultant costs are going to go up. Um, if it's an archaeological site, you know, for those, and again, feel free to shut me down if you've already heard all this stuff, but if it proves to be a, a significant archaeological site, then um, to deal with that, the, the permit costs are going to go up. If it's a sensitive wildlife habitat, deer herding yard, things like this, these can all drive um, the permit and consulting costs up. We don't know yet until we do the NEPA evaluation, what that's going to come out to. So when you're looking at this 290,600, essentially it's, I don't want to say worst case scenario, but the numbers you're seeing here for construction and um, permitting are as high as they're ever going to get on this project um, in our estimation. So essentially, you know, if you get into that property, and we don't run into a lot of problems environmentally and permitting, that number can go down extremely, that 296, okay? Um, another way to reduce costs on a project, if you're trying to, is look at your construction cost. Uh, we've got this 1.723. If you get, to, and this is often the case, I mean, in a, in, a, in a wonderful scenario, we end up with extra money and we can do more than what, we necessarily designed for and continue further than where we started. But um, the the board throughout this process would have the ability to um, modify the the scope of the construction. So those are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at these numbers. So I'll stop there to start, and then I've got more to say about the funding stack below. But is there any questions on what I've said so far? I don't have a question. I when we talked to Tyler a moment, wasn't he saying NEPA and ag land mitigation would be somewhere around $75,000? NEPA review, ag land mitigation. Are you asking me that question? Uh, the board, because Tyler Mumley came to the board before and it's just a significantly different number. He did. We upped it. it These are the. I'm going to say right now, these are the most up-to-date and accurate numbers that can be provided on this project. Okay. I, I, I've got a couple observations, Pat, not necessarily um, questions, but I I think, you know, we did an initial assessment of the property um, with, it was Ruggiano Engineering at the time, um, and my recollection is there were, there's no wetlands involvement, um, there's very likely little archaeological um assessment involvement so there's and then the other piece of it you've got the 46.5 in here as a cost we have set that aside as an earmark cost for carpet funds to pay for it so i don't i don't know that the 46.5 needs to go into the total project cost okay so so that's a good point duncan and let's talk about how we're going to pay for this um which is what the numbers you're going to see underneath in the project funding stack. And this is where we need the board to make a decision, I, hopefully tonight, um, regardless of which way you all go. And and yes, I agree that I, I suspect, quite frankly, that this permitting and NEPA cost is going to be much lower than what you're seeing here. Again, what we're presenting you with is a worst case scenario. I've been to the site. It's pretty high and dry um from what i've seen but i'm not going to tell i'm also not going to tell you i'm an environmental expert and know the ins and outs of what's going to be required through a nepa evaluation so what we're trying to prepare you for is the highest potential cost for this project and that's what you're seeing here 
Um, now, when you mentioned the ARPA funds, let, let's go through the funding stack here. So your NBRC grant total is 1.723. That's that number you're seeing there. Now, when the town of Johnson applied for these NBRC funds, which I would add are extremely competitive, and to get these funds is, is difficult, um, and it's it, it's it speaks to the validity of the project that these funds were awarded. The, the the folks at NBRC saw this as an advantageous pro advantageous project for this community to pursue. Now, when mm -hmm. when the town of Johnson applied for those funds, they did sign a match commitment commitment because NBRC is a fifty percent match funded program. So that's where you're going to see this eight sixty one. Town of Johnson's obligation is eight sixty one. Now the most uh, recent numbers I've been given on what's left with ARPA funds is this 539.16 you see here. Now, if that number's different, we're going to have to work that out. But tonight, the decisions that need to be made um, that you all need to make are, are going to be centered around that. I'm going to hopefully lay that out for you as clearly as possible. But it's our understanding there's still this 539.16 left of ARPA funds that hasn't been spent and has been obligated to this project. <clears throat> so that's going to cover a portion of your 861.945 obligation, but it's not going to cover it all. So that leaves, in order to access these NBRC funds, it's going to leave the town of Johnson with roughly needing to come up with $323,000. That's to access the NBRC funds, the $1.723. And that is, that's money that the NBRC has already said it's coming, as long as you come up with the match, which the town did sign a match commitment when they applied for the funds. So NBRC is functioning under the understanding the town's going to come up with this money. Um, now, you'll also see there's still a little bit of a shortfall. And in, in from what we see from our 2.78 and the NBRC total, which is 1.723. So that's another 354339. That's that NBRC funding shortfall you see there. Now, again, as I just mentioned, some of these costs can go down depending on what happens with the NEPA report and what's needed up there. I suspect they will go down. I'm not going to sit here and tell you 100% with 100% certainty that they will go down. However, um, I suspect they will. How much? I don't know. We won't know that until we do the NEPA. Um, so that's where these numbers shake out. When you add the uh, the NBRC funding shortfall and then the general budget estimate shortfall, you end up at the 677. <clears throat> Pat, can you explain what the very first number in your spreadsheet, the 290,600,000? Know, entails yep so that's a combination of potential top cost for the nepa review so the nepa review could come out as low as fifteen thousand six hundred, which you're going to see in your letter from mumley there you're going to see an estimated total cost however after that you're going to see some additional numbers depending on what is determined by the by the NEPA assessment. So worst case scenario, your NEPA cost is gonna be 40,600. Worst case scenario, okay? Now, if we're in a, again, a worst case scenario with the NEPA program, um, do you have the town of Johnson small scale light? You have the additional spreadsheet with the 250,500 on there? I don't think so. Okay. Well, essentially what's going to happen, let's say, um, you know, you have a, for lack of a better description, a nightmare property up there and um, you run your NEPA and NEPA says you've got to do archaeological, you got to do wetland, you got to do deer, you got to do everything. Okay. It could potentially go as high as this 29600. That's what that number is. Do I think it's going to go that high? No, I don't. I don't think it's going to go that high. But I don't want to come to you and say it's going to be $125,000 and then have it turn out to be $250,000. Now, Melissa, it sounds like, looks like Melissa wants to jump in here as well. 
Uh, one one thing, Pat, and maybe this is just me not seeing it right. That forty six five uh, for design permitting fee, which is already a pre existing contract. I like seeing it as project costs, but when you're showing over under at the bottom, that's already been paid. If that's been paid in full, it can be removed from this uh, cost stack. It hasn't been paid in full, but it's been fully. Has it been paid in full? No. But, it, but it's fully ARPA funded already. Okay. Those funds are secure. Right. So, so my, so my next, my question from that would be, um, the five thirty nine sixteen. Is that what's left? Yes. Okay. So, and if this is the case, you're not going to take any more of that five thirty nine sixteen to pay for the forty six five, the pre existing. Correct. Okay. Yeah. In that case, we can remove the forty six five. You can take it right out. We can leave it for project costs. It's just doesn't need to show up in the shortfall, I guess. Because yep. It's so in that case, we could go ahead and remove the forty six five, um, six. from your six seventy seven. Thirty one, give or take, instead of six seventy seven. Yeah, I can do the math. Okay. But unless somebody's quicker with it than I am, which definitely. It's not going to affect what you need to hit the the NBRC match, however. No, no, we understand that. Right, that's that's the three three twenty two or three twenty three, whatever. Yeah, say three twenty three. I mean, it's so close to that. A breakout of two hundred and fifty six thousand for uh, mitigation, if you will. Do you have actual breakdowns on that? Say like X for archaeological. Yep, we do. Deer yard, whatever X fragment mitigation per acre. Uh, it's not going to be that precise. It's going to be essentially a a rundown of things like um <clears throat> like uh traffic study, legal documentation, wetland delineation, archaeological phase, phase one environmental assessment, bid documents. Deer wintering buffer impact, if it's necessary, that alone is fifty thousand dollars. If we need that, um, the reason why we didn't provide it is because we don't know what we're going to need, and I don't know how the board is going to proceed with this. Um, we what, did have an initial letter from Forest Parks and Rec, or, uh, the Fish and Wildlife, I guess, um, indicating that they would accept. Um, off-site mitigation for, we, we know that there will be deer wintering uh, mitigation required, but we do, we did at least have a letter from them initially saying that they would accept an off-site mitigation of property that the town owns. Right, which is great news. You know, that, that simplifies things, but we still got to go through the NEPA process for this to be bona fide and official for NBRC to get those NBRC funds. Yeah, which which ultimately we'd have to do in the after fifty process as well, I guess. So, so yeah, what decision are you hoping to get tonight? Well, um, I'm not really. I'm hoping the board does what the will of the board is. <laughs> um, what I'm what I'm trying to do. What our job here is to keep this project moving, and if it's not going to move, then we need to walk away essentially, um, and or re look at it. I mean, it, from a planning and envir or environmental, wow, I got environmental on the brain right now. Um, from an economic development standpoint and from a planning standpoint, um, you know, it, it's going to be, it's going to be a bad look if we walk away from an NBRC grant of this size, not just for the town of Johnson, but for local planning and economic development as a whole. And that's not a guilt trip. That's just a reality. Um, you know, NBRC is functioning under, uh, the understanding that the, the match is coming. Um, that's not to say we can't shut it down. Some of our uh, apprehension to move forward with the NEPA, we don't, we don't need board action to move forward with the NEPA. We have everything we have to do that, and we can do it tomorrow. We could have done it yesterday. We haven't done it because of this issue with the matching dollars, this $323,000. Um, 
So without that match, there's no access to the NBRC funds for NEPA or for anything. Um, so there's two sort of two overarching scenarios. One is the town uh, finds a way to come up with this $323,000, whether it's through bond or, or what have you. That's the only way we're, we're going to be able to access any NBRC funds. So that's a question for the board, you know, and I don't need to be here to have you answer that question. That's completely all of your all own discretion. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure is understood is there's potential to go over budget here, to go over the NBRC budget of the 1.723. There's potential for that. However, I do not believe the permitting and the NEPA is going to cost the number you see here, but it could, worst case scenario. Um, so I don't know what the will of the board is. If you want to go for the full difference in bond or none at all, um, at a minimum, what we can do is with the board's um, understanding that they could potentially have to pay for the full NEPA if they don't follow through with the MBRC funds is proceed with the NEPA and see where it goes. Um, if the town decides this thing's getting too expensive, then the town's going to be on the hook for the full NEPA cost, which would be $40,600 worst case scenario. Best case scenario, 15,600. Was that clear? Very. Um, I just was jumping in because Melissa, did you still have something you wanted to say? Uh, just a, a quick clarification besides NEPA aside. So the the additional costs where in the top line where it says NEPA and permit consultants, there's the 40 some odd thousand for the NEPA and then the 250,000 potential additional costs. Um, so where those ones came from in the April 2023 contract with Mumley, um, it was for the 46,000. And then there was a page or two of exclusions. And those are all things that would need to happen in order to take to get the state permits. So so the $250,000 that we're talking about now is Mumley took those exclusions, updated the cost estimate, and it brought their kitchen sink is $250,000 in order to complete the final design and get all the state permits. It does include some wetland and archaeology, but it also includes actually paying for the permits. Um, you know, the traffic study alone, you know, is a significant cost figuring out wastewater, water connections. Um, so those those are all there would still need to be additional funds beyond the forty six thousand five hundred that was signed with Mumley in April in order for them to actually complete that contract and get permits in hand. Just something to keep in mind. Does that make sense? Well. That's it it makes sense to me. Um, I question some of the costs. Is all. And and Duncan, I, I I do as well. I don't believe that all of these items are going to come through. I don't believe that. But I would not be comfortable putting you on a position of saying best case scenario. Here's your budget. <laughs> um, and then you say, well, gosh, now we've only got enough left to build a road. You know. Um, and the board, I mean, that's just the nature of projects of this size. The board, as this thing happens, is going to have the ability, once we get to construction phase, to say, this is what we've got left. What can we do with it within our design? And if we're short, the board will have the ability to either go find more money in a different way, which is always a possibility, or um modify the project um maybe there's sewer and no water maybe there's water and no sewer you know things like that if we get there but we're at a point in terms of the nbrc process where something needs to happen we're either moving or we're not and that's where we're asking the board 
to to tell us what to do. Just as a quick side note, in terms of expected costs, as a for instance, I walked the property today with a historic resources specialist doing a very, very initial walk of the property to, to identify potential areas of concern. Her initial impression, again, I hate to, we're all speaking in these sort of like, you know, sort of vague generalities, but her initial impression also was that because of the nature of the site that she didn't see any immediate concern for archaeological significance. She's going to send me a follow up email within a week or so with the next steps. Um, but again, it's the same thing where none of us think that any of these things are there. Um, and so far, the evidence keeps accumulating that those assumptions are correct. But in terms of due diligence, you know, LCPC and Pat have identified, hey, you got to be prepared that it could go this way and just to make sure that you have that plan or have that expectation in mind so that uh, you, you, you're prepared and planned for it. Well, what are the wishes of the board? Would you like to approve monthly consulting, need for environmental assessment? Okay. Cost? We, we have prints for all of that project. It was done many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. How much stuff was done back then? And are we reinventing the wheel by doing all this stuff now? Didn't we pay for some of that stuff before? Yeah, there was a study that was done by the predecessor to Mumley, which was Ruggiano and Jay. Yes, I realize that. Um, and in that, but I, I guess my answer would be yes or no. The the general consensus of the study at the time was ag mitigation was going to be required, and I think they had a figure of around twenty five thousand estimated. But again, that was in two thousand ten or two thousand eleven. How much? How much has the formula for ag mitigation changed in that period of time? I don't know. Um, Hopefully you guys do. Um, the The assessment indicated that wetlands were not going to be an issue. The assessment indicated that traffic was likely not going to be an issue, and that a simple, you know, simple traffic study could be done. But the traffic study apparently needs to be updated. Um, the assessment was that archaeological were not going to be an issue. The assessment was that we could use. Um, an off-site property to mitigate deer wintering. The, the one that I think that we couldn't get away from was ag land mitigation. But other than that, I think the general consensus of the engineering firm at the time was the project's good, it's a go. But, but clearly there were some things that were excluded from the contract to, you know, to get the final permits. Well, what bothers me is paying twice for something it's already been done. Well, the NEPA review has to be done. We did not conduct the NEPA review as part of the initial assessment. But some of these other fees are, are involved that we, we're going to have to pay for again, correct? Possibly, but that was, what, 14 years ago. I understand that, but, you know, the, the certain things haven't changed. In 14 years. You and I, yeah. <laughs> we got 14, got 14 years, years older. older. 14 <laughs> years older, but you know, it's we're, we're talking about coming up with six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. So Pat, do you have I mean, do you have a recommendation for what and I'm not saying the boy is gonna do it, but if you got a recommendation for what your experience would tell us we should consider as a bond vote amount. Well, here's what I'd say. Um, you've got 1.723 guaranteed if you can come up with that match. It would, to me, um, it would be a shame to leave that money on the table. Um, if, and again, I, I, I can't, it really, some of this is just the will of the board. Um, but for me, at a minimum, I would want to cover the NBRC match to make sure you access those funds if you're serious about serious about doing this project. Um, now, 
if, if the if there what I would say to that is if if the board says we're going to do a three hundred twenty three thousand dollar bond because you want to keep the number as low as possible, um, we will keep the project at one point seven two three eight ninety. It will that's where it'll end because that's when we're running out of money. <laughs> will everything get done? There's a potential everything on your list will not get done. Okay, we may end up with a road, um, stormwater, and um, sewer, and no water. Uh, or, you know, you may end up with water, no sewer. It just depends on how the costs shake out. So unless you do the full projection, um, there's potential you could come in light and have to modify the project in some way. Um, if you were looking to really shave, I wouldn't shave off more than probably 250000 If you're looking to really shave it down. But you're still so gonna, in, yeah. In our budget process, our annual budget process this year, we proposed 75000 from the surplus to apply Towards some of these grant matching fund requirements. So we put 15,000 for last year, right? Right. There's 90 grand. So we potentially have, you know, we potentially have 90 grand above the 323 that we would need to bond for uh, in, well, in, in available funds. Is that, is that true? Because, um, I mean, really, we're on there for the town of Johnson. Match obligation at it. 861, but how much of the, that is in kind administrative numbers? Like, are we actually going all all over? No, no in kind in NBRC. There's none. Palmer. No. You really shot me down quick there, Pat. Sorry. <laughs> so I guess that's funny for another day, but I mean, it, it's a. It's a large conversation, like you say, we're looking at six hundred and thirty thousand dollars, six hundred and thirty three thousand or something. But that's worst case if if NEPA and permitting comes down or if we're able to do off site mitigation or have to purchase out the acre somewhere else with the existing town property, that drops that six hundred quickly. Not to zero. No. But the other thing is this too, I mean, we're spending <clears throat> the ARPA money on. And I, I know that I didn't prove that, but the rest of the board did. I understand that. But that's money that if we don't go forward, that's half a million dollars to do something else with. As long as we're comfortable with leaving $861,945 on the table. I'm comfortable leaving that money because I just. I know you are. Oh, I just. That was well, very quick, but I just. Let's walk away from your clothes on your Yeah, because it's just kind of. Cost more and more and more every year. Pat, one of the one of the calculations that I think about as I think about this whole thing is um what we can sell the lots for, the developed lots for. And in all honesty, I would like to think that we could basically recoup the town's investment, not not the total project cost but at least the town's investments in the sale of those lots. Well, yeah, and it, it's not just the what you get for the lots. It's not just a one-time cost. You're going to be putting this property back on the tax rolls. You're going to be doing economic development in your town. There's a long-term, there's a long tail on it um, moving forward as when the lots are sold. Um, you know, you're, you can look at it this way. Let's... Let's say you took the 323 in a bond, you're taking 323 and you're turning it into 1.7 million. You know, um, the ARPA funds are pennies from heaven. <laughs> That's not going to happen again in our lifetimes, most likely. Hopefully not anyway. Hopefully we don't see another pandemic where um, something like that happens. But you're leveraging your dollars well into the future um, in terms of, economic development and the overall, the bigger picture. Sure. Um, but yeah, at, at first, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit of a hit to start. 
Thank you, Madam Chair of the Board. So the decision, the decision you're really kind of hoping we'll make tonight is whether or not to go forward with the NEPA review. Well, two things. I mean, I'd love you to see you make a decision on the bond, um, but at a minimum, we need to know whether we can proceed with with NEPA. With you all knowing that if you decide to abandon the project, you're going to have to pay for the NEPA in full. What you have covered with your ARPA funds, well, well more than covered. Yeah, if we walk away from that, would be good. Uh, I think the bond conversation is probably not going to happen tonight because we need to have that much wider agenda item. Uh, In the full board, you too. Yeah, just giving temperature to the board. I'm not making a motion, but I am comfortable with proceeding the net one environmental assessment the board member would like to make a motion i would entertain that and will we go forward and we get second do you want a dollar amount fixed for that whatever it is here up to a maximum of forty thousand six. well yeah thousand motion and a second for the discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye all those opposed? No. I'll do a roll call, Mark. No. You don't? I just, fine. There's two in favor and one against. I haven't voted. How do you break that out? You're the chair that needs to make a tie. All right. Breaks I, a tie. I guess, we're, I guess we're going forward. I like to give that away in the roll call, Pat. Mm -hmm. You know, it really adds a lot of drama to our meeting. Well, good roll call. <laughs> Motion passed with Mark opposed. Okay, Donna. <laughs> Um, I think the bond conversation would be good for planning comp, which our third meeting of the month is our planning meeting. So that conversation about a bond, we should definitely start having two weeks from today. May 20th? No, it would be April 16th. Oh, the second half. Second meeting of the month. Yeah, and I'd also like to throw into that conversation. Randall and I have been talking about the revolving loan fund, which is going to come up as a subject later on tonight, mm -hmm. and whether or not we can borrow from the revolving loan fund and ongoing discussions about that. So it, it could be part of the discussion of meeting our obligation of the 323. Yep. So do you have what you need for tonight, Pat? Understand yeah. No. Okay. We've got a great team here. It'd be great if you guys could all come back to the 16th meeting. Um, but I think that gets you moving forward on the industrial part. Yeah, so this can this is going to get us moving some money. Um, and it's going to give us a partial notice to proceed and allow us to at least shake out the, the NEPA stuff. Um, just one thing I did want to point out in terms of the, the bond decision. Um, this will get us started, but it's not going to get us there. So the sooner that that can happen, the better Be, for several reasons. One is we're already six months into this without having done anything. So just keep that in mind. We do have a three three year uh, window to get this done. The other is the bond vote's going to, I'm 99.9% .9 certain it's going to require a referendum in the town. So the town's going to have to vote on it. Um, and that's going to take some time. Now we'll get a full legal decision on that, but all my sources have told me that's the case. So just keep that in mind. It uh, is, yeah. Yep. Like Rosemary nods her head. That's the case. <laughs> okay, well, there, there you have it then. <laughs> so we'll have yeah, to line all that up, which will take time, and blah blah blah. You, you get it. So, so right. one one comment about the six months in already. Um, as you well know, we've been trying to secure EDC funding yep. for this, and and that's been a little bit of a rope across the road in terms of making a lot of forward momentum and movement. So if yep, you, I know. If that needs to be explained to the NBRC folks, I'm I'm sure you can do a good job of that. Yeah, I'll take care of that. No, no problem. Um, and I've been up getting updated on that as well. So, but now let's, you know, now we can get moving and get some things because NEPA is going to take a while. So, um, thanks a lot, everybody. Is there anything more for me? Okay, great. Thank you, Pat. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Tori.
Yeah, and feel free to email me or give me a call too if you got questions on any of this stuff or something's not clear. So this is question for the board. Uh, if we're six months in already, and I realized you were trying to scare the funds, but why didn't you start off with the uh, the NEPA six months ago? It only came up when Tyler came to our meeting, as far as I was concerned. You guys right around by your time. Yeah. That's why we decided to set aside the 75. I think the honest answer to that question, Mike, is we were really hoping the EBA grant would come through and it would be an 80% match instead of a 50% match, which might have made that conversation a little easier. But you did budget back in December. Yep. Five months ago. Yeah, but we didn't find out that we weren't going to get the EBA stuff until and that's with the crew, but with you know, this. Time is of the essence on all this stuff. Yeah, it certainly is. Yep. You know, I I don't know what to tell you. I, I like I said last meeting, the impression out there is that it wasn't going to be any cost for taxpayers. Well, I think there are some people that have that impression. Well, there's quite a few, I think. And I don't know what we're going to do about it. I think we're going to get a really wealthy benefactor call off board member. They're <laughs> <laughs> living in a fantasy world. He's not even for the project anyway. So, anyway, but why would you want to give money to him? Understood. Yeah, that's on our agenda for April 16. Next item um, it's potential funding sources for the grocery store. Well, let's say email about that. I don't it in the packet. Um, just one comment about the. I think I think Pat, perhaps inelegantly, was trying to say that no money has been drawn down for NBRC when he says we haven't done anything, <laughs> but there has been a lot of work that has been ongoing there's been a lot of back and forth in Mumley engineering with the NEPA it wasn't that the NEPA was just sitting idle Mumley came forward with a NEPA it was reviewed by folks and then sent back for revisions etc so there's been a lot actually going on it's just I think he was just trying to say in terms of the the project itself and the drawdown of funds that's you know nothing has happened in that regard nothing from a reportable standpoint to NBRC has happened, but it doesn't mean that there was no work being done uh, by people on the project or whatever that's worth. Oh. Um, as far as uh, my understanding is you wanted me to just sort of speak to the work that has been done regarding the grocery, is that correct? Uh, yeah, just a quick synopsis. I thought there was, uh, did you talk with somebody from Ahead. Yeah, I mean, the summary that I wrote for you, I wrote the sort of totality of things starting back in October, but judging by body language and the extensive discussion we just had, I'm not sure you want to hear the complete summary from October, or do you? No, just, yeah. the, just the short version. Um, well, as some of some of you know, I've I've been in contact with, with the folks from Pomerleau, you know, again, starting in October had ongoing conversations with them have done various sorts of research around the project. I've met with uh, them with uh, folks from LCPC to discuss various funding projects. Most of those, in fact, all of those were eliminated from contention, had a subsequent conversation in January with the folks from USDA. And I reported that to you. I said, you know, there's this loan program available from USDA, USDA loans money at very low to no interest to, uh, municipal utilities, and then that utility then can loan the money back out into the same terms to private businesses uh, for economic development purposes. Uh, towards in that meeting took place towards the end of January, and not probably five days later, I made the village aware, since obviously we can't, we're not a municipal utility operator, I made the village aware that th there was this opportunity. Uh, in February, in like early February, I checked back in with the village to ask if they had pursued it. They had not. And that sort of checking in, sort of having a conversation with the village happened 
for three months, basically. I was sort of checking, say, have you, have you all had the meeting yet? Have you have you arranged something with USDA? Have you discussed it? And the Pomerleau folks would sometimes reach out to me and say, hey, have you ha heard anything? And I'd say, no, I haven't heard anything. Um, right in the midst of all of that, I think uh, some of the select board members and the town administrator were contacted by um, a state hazard mitigation planner saying that there had been a discussion about a funding opportunity that and that they believed that the uh, grocery store would qualify for that. And that was uh, the FEMA SWIFT program. And I got, in, I got in touch with, again, folks from Pomerlo, and I said, hey, I just was made aware of the fact that the, you know, the, the folks from VEM and the, you know, the FEMA state folks, state hazard mitigation folks, believe that you all qualify for this. And uh, Pomerlo's impression was that they weren't sure that they had, but great. And I said, you know, so set up a meeting with them if you are interested, you know, have me included so that I can see what I can do to, you know, support your efforts because it's a program that the town or the village could also either one of us could you know could apply for on behalf of uh of the uh Pomerlo folks uh, but they have not meaning the Pomerlo folks have not replied whether or not they have set up that meeting or where they have interest in setting up that meeting i presume that they do they just haven't got back to me since i was made aware of it that was february 22nd um in the meantime uh just today i found out that on the 27th, the village did have uh, discussions about the USDA loan program. So I don't know, roughly two months after they were made aware of it, they they got a meeting together. They had a meeting, I believe, with LCPC, with the folks from USDA, and I believe VPPSA. And I'm not exactly sure. I know it's a public power consortium of some sort in Vermont, but I don't know what all of the letters stand for. And uh, but there's again, they're still waiting. They had a bunch of questions naturally that would arise from that. And they are uh, waiting for those answers from USDA. So we're we're kind of there. We're kind of not there. It's still not a not a lot has kind of developed other than seemingly the SWIFT program could be something. And it's just a matter of getting the Pomerleau folks on board for having the meetings so that we can figure out, you know, do they want to pursue it? Is it what they had in mind, et cetera? Thank you very much for that. Do you, do you have an idea, Randall, of what kind of number Farmer was needing to go forward? When I met with them back in October, the number was around 700,000 for to build this flood retention wall. And then the last figure I heard in discussions with them, it had, it had grown to 1.1 million for um, the wall. The, the loan program, from USDA can be up to two million dollars, so there would be plenty of money potentially to fund uh, the construction of that wall. And again, it could be a no interest loan, so it could just essentially just be a no, you know, just a pass through to the village, and the village passes it through to Pomerlo, and then Pomerlo repays it again at zero percent interest. You know, obviously there'd be administrative costs that would have to get recouped somewhere. Um, but that in that program, I haven't seen. I just did a very cursory look at, at the SWIFT program because I'd rather be in a situation where I'm with folks can answer questions for me. Um, I didn't see what the total dollar request was, but in the email it said that you know that 100% of the costs were eligible for that program. So it seems potentially promising. But again, there was a little disconnect in what the initial discussion or mention of that program was with Pomerlo versus what the state's view was, because Pomerlo was sort of left with the impression they didn't think that they uh, qualified for that, but it, it appears that the state says that they do, so. Okay, thank you for that update. Thank you very much. Okay. Sure. I, I think this would be a much greater priority than the other thing I checked. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for that observation. The other item, <laughs> The other item we have under Randall's uh, report is something that I, I may have miss, mistakenly tucked in on Randall, and I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here. Uh, the conversation about direct, congressionally directed spending, uh, spending. I think the timeline is pretty short. We don't really have any shovel ready projects, but. 
Well, what I would what I would say to that is, I think I mentioned in an e in an email just as a kind of summary as we were discussing you know agenda items and whatnot that I had attended a webinar from Senator Sanders' office, sort of walking people through uh, the CDS process, at least as it pertains to Senator Sanders' office, and uh, you know there was a sort of question and answer period, et cetera, and so. The shovel ready piece is important, but really that's not the central challenge. And I think Tom had had a conversation with Senator Sanders office as well, and he can speak to this. It's sh certainly shovel ready is advantageous and helpful, but the timeline for the disperse the disbursement of money is the real challenge. In other words, it CDS works much better when you already have the cash on hand. You know, you, when you're in a cash flow, you're like in a great cash flow advantageous situation is when CDS really works the best. Because I think Tom said today, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, that, you know, the turnaround can be like two years from the acceptance and recommendation from, you know, one of the congressional uh, representatives and when the money actually makes it to you. And when you're working, again, you know, on some of these tight projects, that, you know, that have other funding st stacks connected to them. That's the problem. It's really better when you have the money on hand, you expend it, and then you, you know, hopefully get it reimbursed, but it might be two years down the road and your project might already be complete at that point, you know, that sort of thing. I didn't know if you wanted to chime in on that, Tom, or? So there's really two parts. Um, one is the earliest that the project could be, you know, highly competitive. Um, I think Randall, in a conversation you and I had, you said there was 200 people at that webinar. Um, so it's really competitive. There is a focus on uh, communities that were impacted by the flood. However, we can only do projects that have not been started. So we can't, we won't be accepted for any funding um, if we've already started the project. Um, and we can't, we can't work with projects that already have federal funding included. So you can't use it, say, for the MBRC project, the industrial park match, or we can't use it for the library to, for any over, overhead there. It would have to be a new project um, that has no federal funding tied to it, and it would have to, we put that in, I believe it's uh, April 9th deadline next Tuesday, which is fast, right? It's coming right around. Um, I asked if there was assistance for writing the grant because our resources are limited right now. Um, there are programs through USDA it's called the Ready Program to help us write a grant if you had a project in mind. But we'd have to be pretty far along on whatever project that is in mind. Um, so the application's due April 9th. We wouldn't find out if we were accepted at the earliest until uh, October 1st. But generally, according, I was speaking with uh, some designers of office these projects get kicked down the road to the budget get passed in January, February of next year. So we wouldn't even know if we were accepted. So we have to have a project plan that's just going to sit on the back burner until next winter. And then the project has to be fully funded by us. We have to float that cash for about two years um, to get reimbursed. Because of the state of uh, the way the federal budget works is this money is allocated annually and there is a risk that even though we were accepted and awarded the project that that funding might not come through because of future budget failures. It hasn't happened, but it's always a risk. Um, and so the grant administration is also burdensome and they haven't made that pro they've made it the application process easy, but the grant administration part is burdensome. That was and that, that's where that ready program might come into because there might be funding available to provide for that grant administration. Um, my first 30,000 foot view uh, is we don't have anything ready for that. Everything we have already has federal funding tied. And the only thing, and I'm gonna hate you to bring this up, is we could, we might be able to apply for the industrial park because this doesn't have the same limits as the MBRC grant. So we could apply for the full 2 million. And if we were awarded the 2 million for CDS funding and just tell MBRC, okay, we're done. Swallow the 50,000 that we already spent. So then our match is only, it's 20% match. 
but that's two hundred thousand that we're on the or sorry four hundred thousand that we're on the hook for instead of six hundred seventy thousand. So there's an opportunity that we could spend that we could actually do that industrial park project for less, but we'd have to put this together in a week. Um, if that's really the only project I could think of, and I, I think you know I, I probably should have brought this up with Pat was there, but I, didn't, I actually didn't think about it for right now. Um, is what happens if we say no to MBRC if we went this far and long? You know, and is that even an option to throw away that three quarters of a million dollars to try to get two million, or can both projects kind of go on hold until we hear, kind of like we did the EDA grant, can we put CDS funding out and put the industrial park on hold until we hear about that? You know, that that's another risk that we're taking, right? So it's like we're kind of juggling funding sources, and we we have to decide before April. We have to put this together before April. Do I think Randall and I can put it together and break the line? Sure, but we have to probably have to move quickly on this as well. I think you better start. You know, so would the board like to risk the MBRC funding and put the project on hold and try for CDS funding? Which is, or should we just move forward with the industrial park as is? And that's like, you know, the devil you know versus the devil you don't. Does your comment tie into this? Sure. All right. So if you're looking for a shovel, not quite ready project that has been discussed in the past, um, our top mill land up behind the old mill is a beautiful hillside. And Walter Tom Roy <clears throat> had sort of floated the idea of mountain bike trails. And we can make it a four season area with back into ski trails and mountain bike trails, which would draw people in. Johnson, especially around the railroad. It's land that's just sitting there doing nothing. It's got the bass trail. I mean, hire somebody, cut some trails, get people into town. Recreation, do good for that. What's the value of the trails? Conversation through town as a whole. It's done, Baldi's plan. The town what site does anybody know? Yeah, this comprehensive plan. The kind trails of, plan. Yeah, the trails plan that kind of tied the paddlers trail and the long trail and the rail trail and add another trail, I think. Johnson Farm and Garden back through town up to the college. So, so I support the trails idea. At this point, um, I would personally I would like to sit down with the planning commission. That's the one for a long term vision plan for Legion Field, and a long term vision plan for that area. I, I don't know if specifically for uh, congressional direct spending, I want to shove that forward without just kind of a grander scheme. The conservation commission, I'm sure, would want to be involved. Tree board, that would be an opportunity for them to do something up there too. The conservation commission has actually developed a long term use plan for that property, right, Lois? Yeah, we have, but we haven't updated it. That's one of the things that I've been trying to raise funds for, but got nowhere for the last plan. So, with, with Doug's idea of doing longer version trails, I don't think we need it. I, I'm, I'm just Katie's Falls, when they did their mountain bike trails, the place is fun. Jeffersonville has got a place that they cut. It's fun for people. The backcountry ski areas that the states were working on with some nonprofits, they're small. They draw people in. I think well, it's it's fun yeah. and it's exhilarating. We got a gorgeous hillside, it, and it's more than just long duration trails. We got the we got the rail trail today. Oh, well, there have back road is so long. This would be a phenomenal area if you could directly. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, in terms of this conversation, <laughs> I do it next Friday. We can't even get the village's permission until Wednesday. Do we put all the work in? The village says no. I don't know what the likelihood of that is, but I can guarantee you that we only have 50% of the say. Plus, deadlines and larger plans. Uh, it's a good point. Thank you for bringing it up. Maybe I could uh, reach out to Kelly Spiro's name. What I was going to say 
as we should talk about trails in our annual planning meeting. What I was going to say for congressionally directed spending is the way I kind of see it for this year. We're going to redo the covered bridge on Water Pro. Okay. I'd like to see it on our annual calendar in the October, September time frame to actually sit down and kind of have a, a plan for the board where you guys and the rest of the employees kind of have time to come up with a plan that would be good to submit instead of this, oh crap, we have, you know, you, you don't, yeah, it's like a conundrum, right? Like, like we have grants what? dictate our projects, or do we have we a project or finance for, you know, for you? Yeah. Uh, the rest of the board can weigh in. That's just how I see it for this year, and I could be way off. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but I think we should be aware that this grant possibility is out there in an earlier time. Um, and to answer your question, do we? Chase grants or do we chase projects? I think we need more planning. Yes, we need. I think I think we're putting so much emphasis on the timelines of grants. We're putting the cart ahead of the horse so often. I mean, I think what we really need to do is just like you know tie up the loose end and like update the conservation committee's plan, and then you know what? Like those grants are going to fall into place, you know, and like let's update Legion Fields plan. And they're going to fall into place, and like whatever the vision of Johnson is. Like right now, if we make that plan, all the money, we're, we're at the tip of the pyramid. We're one of the four worst towns in the state. If we say this is what we want, we're going to get it. But we have to like have that plan together. And so really what we should do is come together for that plan right right away, you know, like figure out what does this community really want. Right. We, the planning commission has got to really work close with us. Yeah, we got to get them probably to a meeting and we got to get to their meeting. Right. Um, I think it'd be nice to see like for the, I think it would be nice that if the select board could organize the committees more, where you come to us and you say, okay, what's all of the things you would want a grant for, like a list, and then whether it's the planning commission or you guys go through it and assess, like prioritize it, and then give that to Randall, and then he can move forward and go. Like we would have more things organized and. But I think it needs to come from you guys down to the commissions and committees and give us direction on what to give you. I think that's really great, but I think part of is like a little bit like some some stuff like the planning commission and conservation commission are like they actually have powers outside the select board's authority and really they should be directing the select board statutorily, which is like this is like this conundrum, right? And so, like, the planning commission is asking the select board for insight, and the select board is hoping that the planning commission does their statutorial duty. And I think really we should just have a meeting together and say, yeah. what does Johnson want? Like, it's not about the planning commission select board. It's like, what's the future of Johnson? Like, that's the larger theoretical entity that we're all working for, right? Yeah. This, so, like, all yeah. Like, this is good and fault, but, but we are kind of falling behind, and this yeah. is just about this congressionally direct spending this year. I do encourage you to come to the planning meeting. Really do. It's yeah. good and I'm not yeah. 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 <laughs> Can I just chime in with one last thing, Chair? Uh, you basically read my mind, and I think that's the ongoing working assumption that I've had is it's great to be aware of these things. Now we know, right? We, we only have a week for this. So to me, there's no realistic way that you're going to meet that deadline. But now we know. Now we know this opportunity exists. We know the basic parameters of it. Now we can begin the planning so that we are perfectly positioned by the time it comes around next time. It stinks to say, oh, there's this money and we have to wait potentially. But it just, if we're going to act prudently and with the best use of our resources, we should plan, get everything in place so that we're ready for these opportunities instead of, you know, as Tom said and as other folks kind of said, like, if you just see grant opportunities popping up and you're just like, well, what can we do? That's just really not an effective way to pursue funding. It's it's for the the, the committees to do the hard work of identifying what priority projects are, what their, you know, their highest and best use of their time is, and then having that conversation, okay, this is what it is. How do we make this thing happen? Who do we need to talk to? What are all the things that we have to line up to make this thing happen? And then we go from there to see what the funding opportunities are, et cetera. Or in this case, since we know of one, we have the we start having the conversations now so that we're just positioned to just roll it out for next year. That's 
all I have to say, and won't can take up any more of your time, hopefully tonight. <laughs> the Johnson, in support of what Randall is saying, the Johnson Main Street project is a classic example. It started out with a municipal planning grant. Um, it graduated to another grant that you know got the basic design done, and then Senator Jim Jeffords at the time um, got an earmark for that project in the Johnson Main Street became a reality because of it. But it started with a plan, and we never would have gotten the earmark if we didn't have you know sort of that vision and plan conceptual. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Randall. I do appreciate it. All yeah. good information. I wasn't trying to cut anybody out. Keep up the good work, Randall. But we do have to move on to Tom's report here. Um, so we have. Where did we end up on it? I don't think we're seeing we'll it this year. This year. Of the yeah. Too sure. Sure. So we're going to drop this mm -hmm. business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, first thing on the year four is your new bio applications. Can I jump? Um, I put it in my report to the board that one of you guys get kind of like the day to day what's going on. Um, but Jason touched on it earlier about the purchasing policy, and in the packet, you'll see item 7D. Um, can we can we make a plan to address the purchasing policy? Um, item 7B is packet. Oh. Just, um, I think a thousand dollars was needed. You know, there was bad things happened, and the board responded with making stricter purchasing guidelines. However, you know, inflation's happened. We have good staff in place. Can we look at addressing um, the purchasing policy for the efficiency of, of government? You know, here's Jason has to go. He has to come to you every. Every other week to spend over a thousand dollars, and for him to get his truck inspected is nine hundred dollars. You know, just rid of the inspection. You know, and I've never had my truck inspection without something in that, right? Right. So, what are the board's wishes? Do they want Tom to work on the procurement policy? Come back to us a little bit. Unless you have a number right now, I'd love to jump to like twenty five hundred. And like, it, it doesn't. Do you want to go to twenty five hundred? Well, five thousand, ten thousand. I'd actually like to revamp it all together, maybe look at a purchasing order policy, maybe looking at a two signatures so that Jason can't, Jason, he can only sign off, but he can't order, you know, so like we have two highway members, like there's ways that we can do it to protect from fraud and theft, but we need to be able to do government well, you know, and you can't, you can't do it with a thousand dollars. You know, our volunteers who have projects at the Arboretum or Beautification or Rail Trail, like they need to buy stuff sometimes. I'm like, how can we do that in a way that's effective? I'd like to make a motion. Go for it. I would like to move that we increase the minimum spending limit under the current purchasing policy to three thousand dollars. Tom can come back to us with an amended copy of that. We can all sign in as part of that process. We can begin the process of revamping the purchasing policy and. Personally, I'd love to see a PO system. Yeah. A PO I system. I know. It's been a baby. Why well, don't we have a PO system? You never had one. You didn't do it in the two years I was gone. <laughs> All we did was come here and say, where's the I guess you did. You didn't do a whole well, lot. I spent the PO system. If we're not reinventing the wheel, the AP software is already set up to take it. I mean, that's like the best part about it. And we can have a policy that, you know, the PO is needed for an item over three thousand. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Okay. But I'll second that motion. All right. There's a motion, a second. It's not a bulleted point, but it is in the packet. So, any further discussion? Seeing none, all, all those in favor of the amendment. You have you have it, Diamond. Being three thousand. Signifies by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Sticky wicket. I'm going to do a roll call here. <laughs> aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. I guess it'll wait until next meeting. All right. Thanks, Tom. Can we go to the reviewing buyouts now? Do you actually have that uh, package coming in? 
There are two new applications. Scott, have you seen these? Um, 357 main, lower main, and 384 lower main. Is that correct? 357. 325 lower main street and 384 lower main street. Yeah. Um, so those are the two newest. Also, the seven. It's seven previous applications had some holes in it. Um, where they were, and that the email on top is from the Department of Emergency Management. Um, it's where we need to sign places we didn't sign, provide documents that aren't there, go back to residents to get more documents signed. And could the board uh, delegate a select board member or the town administrator to sign on behalf of the board to the already approved applications um, so that we can continue moving those through or um, if a board member could sign or but we can get this process to move along. Okay. okay. So I guess at this point, look. I would entertain a motion. I don't have a mustache to hear. I just can't pull that off. I'd entertain a motion to uh, authorize the administrator to sign on behalf of the approved buyout applications. I don't think that'd be the ones that you approved. Yeah. Okay. Do you want somebody else to sign? No. I'm Johnny, you got that? I'll make that motion. We'll second. Move for a second. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, Tom. Congratulations. You get to sign off. What were those? 325 Lower Main West and what was and 384 Lower Main West. <laughs> Twenty five is on this side, right? Yeah. Eighty four is on that side. Yeah. Can we those applications are in your statute? No. No. Scott has them right now. There's well, there's sensitive information. Yeah. In so, but we can give name and address. That's yeah. only two identifiers. Right. So three twenty five and three eighty four are both owned by Daryl and Team Draper, correctly. Yeah. So one of them is going to be one. Do you know what the other one is? Next door. Right next door? Your community space. Guys, why aren't we doing a buyout on the municipal building? That's fine. We didn't have the battle inside. One of the board's wishes with the current applications. <laughs> a previous board had the. Uh, Do you see any of the issues? It's the great ones. I, I don't see why we have to prove them if they're down. People are, are you making a motion? Yes, I have moved that we approve the applications that were submitted for this meeting. We have 325, 384, closing left, and those are another one. Just those two. Just those two. Right. You got that 325 and 384 lower main west application. And then is your motion to authorize Tom to sign on behalf of the town? We just did. If we pass this, oh, I guess if we did. It, it, you're good to go. All right. All right well, well, first we need to vote on the second motion. A second. Further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. It's fine. We have two more buyouts. Next item. On uh, your report, Tom, as the beautification mini grants. Um, there's a little write up, but could you just give us a brief description of your card up? Um, sure. Um, yep. So, three of us are here to represent the beautification committee. Um, All three of you. Yeah. yeah. So, we, um, this is our third or fourth annual mini grant um, season. And we um, didn't get many applications this year, but the ones that we did get, we discussed and approved. One is D. Lukoyer doing flowers again at the community bread oven. This will be the third summer that she's done that. And everyone seems to really enjoy those and she made them beautifully. It's for $100. And then the second one is Howard Romero's here to speak about his project if you have further questions, but he would like to do, um, maintenance to the trailhead 
at Old Mill Park. And um, we discussed that at length as a committee and decided that we did think that that falls under the parameters of our community grants. One thing that it doesn't fall under the parameters of is we usually do up to $200 for our grants. He's asking for 500, but because we had so few applications, we have the funds to, to give him the $500 should you all think that's a good idea. Any questions from the board? He's the one with the case here right now. <laughs> Is Howard Romero related to the case here now? I think so. By Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I don't think he gets any closer than that. If I come, if I will, we know. What are the board's wishes with the two applications that the beautification committee has put forward in support? Right? And you're recommending this? Yes. So, uh, yeah. Approval to approve. Motion to approve six hundred dollars in money grants. I'll second that. Motion a second for the discussion. No Just so you know that both folks are willing to. We have a couple different ways that it can get paid. One is um, they pay up front and then get reimbursed, submit the um, receipts to Rosemary and get reimbursed, or um, they go through Rosemary to do the ordering. Both are willing to pay up front and get reimbursed. Oh. Would both individuals be willing to work with vendors that already have accounts with the town? Sure. That, so that way you could purchase under our account, which would be tax free. And then it would be no no money out of your pocket. No, that, that, well, it's part of the things that are not part of your vendors, right? Yeah, you know, that would be it would take a little bit of work to work with Rosemary to organize this purchase ahead of time. But I don't know if we can do that with the flowers. Um, Farm and Garden sometimes has them, but they're kind of limited. I think you can do a one time sales tax sales tax exempt. Yeah, the form S3. You'd have to you know, work with Rosemary okay. to get the. Tax I'll let D know about that. Okay. Yeah. If it, if it helps, it's probably going, you know. Yeah. So, further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. All those opposed? One thing, Kyle, um, if there's any like support or something in the future, on the town website or Facebook page or something, could you reach out to me? Or just if we can give more support, that's all. Yeah, thanks. So, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. you Good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, Scott's been waiting here a long time, so I'm switching 14 and 13. It's like he can go home. Does he literally select board meetings a lot? Well, everybody that retires from this says they don't miss it. I don't know what that means. I've got. 21 more meetings to really get his contract. So, Scott, well, thank, um, you. Right. thank you very thank much. You to get Anything special you'd like to say? I believe they're looking for a signature. We're looking for a signature, and we need to contract one uh, contract sign since the money is dependent upon all my tenants of building, mm -hmm. which did happen again this year. And thank you. I wanted to just verify that in our contract, the funding that we have for jobs and you're going to make me look up. Or did Rosemary already check? She says it's good. It's 155 594. Well, it's 155 what the contract says. 155 594. And zero pennies is what we carry. Yes. We're not shortchanging on those zero pennies, are we? You know, we're probably making two pennies. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's typically the chair that signs us. That has been something in the past, yes. Move to, move to authorize Evan as chair to sign the next contract. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Just to let you know how no. it, this is. This like Penn's Okay. I'm going to go back. Um, this fiscal year's budget, the first six months, if we're right on track, the quarter that just ended, um, business has been down, good for some, not bad for the budget, or bad for the budget, um, mostly due to um, some of the 911 calls are getting the most, so we're losing some income there. But the big thing is working with insurance companies. They just get more difficult and more difficult. Yeah. They're just refusing 
um, payment. We have a very good billing department and they just keep going back and going back and we get our money eventually, but that's only going to get harder. Exactly. I thought that when I was in the legislature, we passed legislation that EMF people were going to be the first people to pay. That we basically they were guaranteed because what well, was happening was people were getting getting reimbursed, the individuals were getting reimbursed and not getting you know well and Medicaid is very good. Medicare starts about just about everything. Okay. Um, and private insurance is getting very, very difficult to do. So Medicare is not as good as Medicaid. Is in case right. That's what the legislation is. So, and Medicaid, of course, is now paying for non transports as long as we do assessments. Yeah. Um, there is a bill in the U.S. Senate, and I don't know if it's going any further, that Medicare would fall suit. We're all just yeah, but it's we try to keep the per capita cost and increase down and we consider really less and others around us. Um, thanks for the money. I'm going to talk. All right, are you having any issues finding help? We are doing well. We've got people yeah, coming in from left to do something else. Right? We've had people move up here from Southern Vermont. We've had some people move here from Alaska. We had oh, um, light medics from Alaska that would come down for two weeks and then go back to Alaska um, and work two weeks up there with the California team. Um, they want to retire down into this area. So they really want to um, but we got some great people. That's pretty well. You must have a good culture there. Well, we do. We've got a great CEO and we get great people and we try to make them know that they're a priority to go and also make sure that without them, we're not in business. Yeah. So we do what we can. It's a lot easier to make two people than it is to keep them big replacements. Well, Brian, maybe I'll try to do it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to regular uh, long and long bond ratification. I can say, huh? Like I'm saying, he got his six hundred dollars. Five hundred, five hundred dollars. Oh, I have to. He went. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, there was a hundred dollars to be. Yeah. See, he's on my payroll. So this I know. Uh, Duncan, Tom, anybody can correct me or take it if they want. Uh, the revolving loan fund had some proposed amendments in 2018, I believe, which are supported by the meeting minutes that are in the packet. Yeah. Uh, but the current board at the time had not signed it, so that's just ratifying the changes that they had. Well, we don't know whether they signed it anymore. Can't find a sign. Yeah. Could they get lost in the letter? It might have. Maybe maybe it's like inch thick and were you on the board in 18? Yeah. Yeah. He was. Yeah, yeah he wow. was in a minute. Sign it. I've signed so many things six yeah. years. Yeah. Spoken like it's a hard to keep, It's hard to keep right. track of them. That's what you signed it. I don't. <laughs> so what are the board's budgets on ratifying uh, the proposed changes as accepted by a previous board? It, seems like it has done. to be done. Yeah. yeah. We no, can't say no. I move to approve the copy. Do you have a signature copy done? Yeah, so I gave it to Adam. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. really? Really? Oh, we're gonna get a pregnant here. Yeah, doing all you need is the last page. So the well, but it's double sided. So it is. We don't, we don't need a double sided one. Do we? You want to just go find a pregnant? That's what I'm doing right now. So there's a motion. I think he didn't really finish his motion. My motion was to approve the um to ratify the copy of the revolving loan fund as signed by the members in 2018. Which were Erica Goodnack, Kitty Duff, Holy Carlos. Motion on the floor. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. Um, we're waiting for a copy. I'm sort of confused by the motion because you're saying as signed by the members, but I thought the issue was that you couldn't find a sign. As approved. Oh, as approved. That is approved by the, by the members. And, and, it, and it may well have been signed. We just can't find the signed copy. You can put down uh, as of uh, November 19, 2018, because that's one of the minutes. Was, wasn't it 10 15? Was it to prove, well, it was November 19, 2018. On the minute. On the minute. That's when the minutes were approved. But the meeting was 10 15. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Rosemary, are you okay with signing this? Probably not. Thank you. Thank you. It actually doesn't signify anything. I've had more fun with that over the years. <laughs> All right, our next item as this is going around for signature is municipal building options. That's something we would like to take the top. Sure. I think this is just a formal acknowledgement that before rumors start flying around, just that um, if there's a discussion to move, if there's a discussion to move the municipal building, Filter to the village or out the floodplain that the board may look into it, you know, just so that it's just, you know, there was an I there was some options for funding. Um, maybe put the municipal building with the library. There was a thought about maybe even stepping into the McClellan building, although that's no longer an option. But as part of the general planning for how to recover from this flood, it might include getting out of this building and or it might include staying in this building, but to have an idea that's not discussed by the board floating around is not a good idea for the town either. You know, just just to say that discussions are 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 happening, you know, and it comes up all the time randomly. Uh, especially when we talk about the mitigation efforts, like what happens if we can't we're going to find out next week whether or not we have a certificate of elevation that allows the mitigation project to go forward. And what if that falls through? Then the next thing we look at is the FEMA, I believe it's called the BRIC program, to move off the, out of the floodplain. You know, there's, uh, on Thursday, the village is looking at meeting with, to look at options around town for the sewage treatment center. You know, one of those might be right in the backyard of this municipal building. Not the best one, it's not the first one, but it's an option. You mean that a parking lot right Yeah, there? you know, and so there's like just so before we before any of these things go too far down the road, just acknowledge that we in the next couple of weeks we might have a harder decision on our hands than we're ready for and just know that when you before you when you get an email, you're no longer surprised. Um, is there a board action associated with it? Nope, just a simple formal acknowledgement that like, as these moving parts come into play. Any it, board member is specifically against the idea of potentially moving to the flood plane out to say say you're against it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm not opposed to the concept of having future discussions about it if needed. I, I'm a little concerned with the that closer to the village. Sorry. Because closer to the village, I mean, Legion Field is probably further away from the village than this building. You know, that was that was misspoken. You know, like one of the discussions was um, the, the cost to put a second story on the library. So say the library grant goes through. The cost to put a second story on the addition, the 40 by 40 addition, is $560,000. There is FEMA funding available for us to get off the floodplain. And so at the time that that grant is approved, if the mitigation work gets denied here, we might be having that discussion in a month or two. But we should acknowledge that those options are happening, you know, outside of our control. And that when they get presented, we're not blindsided. And just that 
you know, the, and if we're going to put it on the second story, we need to do that at the time of the construction versus coming back in three years and saying, okay, we just got flooded again. Let's tear off the roof and put it on, you know, and, and then if we're going to do it at the library, it also means we got to put a vault in the basement or a vault in the first floor. So there's like key moving parts to whatever the future is that just fall into place sometimes by outside decisions. And I guess that's all this is is saying right now we have a lot of moving parts with the sewage treatment center. We have moving parts with the certificate of elevation. We have moving parts with the library grant. And just, you know, who knows what the, what the future holds, but just know that if you have an option or an idea, it might be worth thinking about and talking about or whatever that is. Um, Thank you for the update. It's all it is. All it is is just a formal, hey, hello, this is being discussed at times. I do believe if we move forward with any of these type of ideas, so I say for a new municipal office building, I think we are under handling the dogs with the village and, and have it fully owned by the town and charge rent to the village. I could not agree that an agreement to clarify ownership would be so appreciative from my perspective. Every single day, there is a gray area for which the village manager and I have to debate and decide. Nine times out of 10, they go smoothly. One out of 10, they do not. Well, and I think that uh, after a number of these things get all cleared up, and maybe that could be a discussion in our next joint meeting yep. uh, with the town assuming full responsibility from the municipal office and charging the village rent. I think the single largest problem right now is that clock power and how it has to earn maintenance. This one, and this two, right here, because of that shared ownership and inability for shared funding. Um, and that's not anyone's fault. It's the reality of the finances of the two different boards coming together. But if you had sole ownership, you're only pointing a finger at one person or one board. And we also probably ought to throw in the mill house in there too. Get that thing squared away. And the lower storage shed and the village garage and the town. Out of the fun well, it's, it has to be discussed. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly worth the discussion. Sure, seeing where they're at. I do have a question. Um, if, and, and again, this is way down the road. Maybe it doesn't need to be discussed. But if you were to vacate the building here, what happens to the building? You know, I think that's a really good. Make question. a great sewer plan. Yeah, but <laughs> well, not much, much better. Yeah. Not much better. <laughs> What's interesting is like, you know, the town right now, the town has it assessed at 1.5 million. And if the town would sell that and build an addition for 50% of that, say it's 750,000 and put an addition on the library for 560, we walk away cash flow positive, don't. And that, that might be a decision that's forced by the cost of the sewage treatment plant, wherever that ends up. You know, it might also be a decision forced by we can't afford to do the mitigation efforts because FEMA will no longer pay for it because of the height of the first floor windows. And when those those decisions are going to come before the board, whether the board is ready for them or not, you know, and it just there are just so many moving pieces, right? Yeah. So uh, the only other thing I want to do is just make a comment on the wastewater treatment plant. I, I know this keeps getting included back to the village, but that's a key part to this whole community, town included, because it covers the college. It actually covers your industrial park, town residents and village residents. It's huge. It's our safety net for our community. So we probably shouldn't treat it so much like oh, it's a village issue. Probably it's, the single largest very problem since what? Yeah. Just Do you think the village would agree to that? Yeah, it's yeah. Everything. it affects everything. I agree. I just sort of say I think they they're strongly empowered. I think it's their baby. Legally it is, but the community wide, it's a community issue. It, I don't think there should be a dividing line between 
Okay. It, it just it purple us if we don't get that fixed. At one time, there was a trustee that wanted to have more sewer hookups and went down to yeah. go to the wastewater treatment. Yeah. So they could bring in the river. Right. I guess if they still had extra capacity, they do. do. Okay. Almost. Oh, yeah. percent capacity. Is there extra capacity? Especially if the college spiral. Yeah. If the college goes out, the sewage plant's probably going to go on. I, I don't believe that the sewage treatment facility could survive on just the revenue generated by the residents. I don't think so. Either. I don't really look at those budgets, so I don't know. They're tight. Well, they're yeah, the college is, them for years. The college is 30% of the, you know, 25 to 30% of the revenue of electric water and sewer. All of them. And of all of those things, the wastewater treatment plant could least afford, in my opinion, yeah. could least afford the, the loss of residents. The village has got some real things to deal with here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, Thank back, you on, for the back on topic. Uh, no, it and maybe the village will need more of these minutes to go. I'm guessing they're going to vote to merge. Yeah. 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 Um, but thank you for the update, Tom. And I guess that's a wonderful heads up. You know, there will be decisions that need to come in front of the board. Yeah. yeah. It's mitigation of this building is prohibited. Yeah, I know. I don't have the answer right now. It's just scary. Oh, hey, heads up, guys. My plug's mine. <laughs> So, Tom, you had circulated an email to all of us asking us to either come or be involved in a meeting on the fourth. That's been rescheduled. Yeah. It was nine nine. Correct. I think at nine thirty. So, just you know, just a heads up. If you guys haven't paid attention to that, I know you probably can't make it. But which meeting? Uh, it's which team of mitigation will be on oh. site. So, like, there's Jim, Mark. Can't say his last name, but he's like our team representative is supporting us. Ron, the team consultant, will be there. I think uh, Gene and Kelly and Gene Engel, Kelly and Dorn will be there from the library. I'll be there. Um, but it would be great if the select board member could be there just to. We're going to get the full rundown. Of we can't have more than three. Oh, yeah. Two. Two. Can't two, two. 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 So if, if two could show up, that would be great. You know, just to like hear from the horse's mouth that like, where where we hopefully we have the certificate of validation by then. And it would just be great to know what we're missing, what we're looking at for timelines and other options that are available if they don't if it doesn't fall through. We're gonna meet over to the school on we? Probably meet right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try to make that. You can make that too, can't you? Okay. Uh probably. You know, my schedule is so tight being retired, but it's really tough to see one. This looks like my 9 30 is before it comes up to run, so yeah. it should be all set. Pencil everything in. <laughs> so, are we all set with a regularly scheduled meeting with a couple of executive session? Do we want to address Thursday the paper before at all in public session? Um, so Dean is on vacation, I think it's. Uh, one of the he doesn't need to be employees. No. He, he reports to Tom so we can do his review uh, with Tom. I believe Randall's confirmed that the board works. I haven't actually asked you until right now when we're on camera. Huh. I think uh, I would like to be there in present. So if you guys are willing to come together with me, if we're going to do it. I'm going to be in person. I, I'm, I'm still good for the board. Um, yeah. I might have to and sleep over some. Everybody now. else is retired. <laughs> well, welcome, Tim. Hey. You're sleeping over here from the third? For the, you know, for the, fourth, the night of the fourth after the meeting. Mark said he has six months on him. Yeah, he has an apartment for me. I can run through. Yeah. yeah. Is, yeah. That, is yeah. that an honest concern? One of his empty you know how many times the forecast is bad? Oh, I was flood damage. Is it, I, I'm okay. trying to listen to Tom. Is it honest concern about the, I don't about think, the storm? Uh, I, I think for the sake, but the fact that it's just Randall and I, I think it's going to be okay. okay. And then, you know, if Randall 
wants to zoom in, you can zoom in. There, it should be okay. All right, and that's a safety concern, right? Yeah. Or that, yeah. That's crazy. But I guess we're still on for the fourth. We can always cancel. We get ten feet of snow. It's gonna fizzle out. It's not gonna be nice. Yeah, got a chase still here. Like get ten feet of snow, you guys won't worry about going. Right. There you go. So, uh, our first executive session uh, discussed attorney client communication. Is that a pain motion to enter executive session? Do you stay for the whole meeting? Or Sorry, yeah, but I don't know. He said there was some stuff in there, and I was all on this. All right. I don't know. All right. Well, we move that we enter into a executive session to discuss attorney client communications under 1 DSA 313 sub A 1 sub F. I'll second that. Second. Okay. Who's invited to this executive session? Uh, say Tom. Uh, now, do we have any of the others that we want? Because we might want to change the order. We um why would we have to be over for any of the others? Well, Rosemary should be here for the second one because she needs to she has she would have clerk duties. Okay. That's so good. can I change my motion? I so it's not change, change anything. anything. Did you do you second it? Okay. I guess the motion dies, Donna. Okay. Exactly. I'll make a new motion. I never called it. I make a new motion. I'll do that. that. Sure. Uh, I make a motion to go into executive session for the negotiating or securing of a possible real estate purchase or lease option under one BSA 313A sub two. Motion on the floor. Second. Motion a second. Uh, who's coming to this executive session? Um, with with uh, Tom and Rosemary being invited. Cool. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Boards entering executive session at 9 12.